the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me to higher levels oh God this is why we are gathered higher levels of perception higher levels of power higher levels of grace higher levels of spiritual illumination the grace that can break open closed gates and release that dimension of grace and glory that is upon our lives this we obtain tonight hallelujah we desire to see him through his word because the bible says it is only as we behold him we are not changed when he is around we are changed when we see him to see you high and lifted up you are shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy holy oh we'll see you high and lifted up you are shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 please lay your hands on your head in one minute and pray my mind be open my spirit be open my eyes be open someone is praying Shela Karuska de Branding in the Brother Gadi Baria. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. May God bless you. Please be seated. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4 we'll begin today and then we'll take it tomorrow and as God will grant us grace I love the Word of God because it sustains the power to truly bless and to lift Romans 15 and verse 4 the Bible says for whatsoever things the Word of God is coming now whatsoever things were written aforetime it says they were written for our learning not just for our knowledge they were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scripture we might have hope what hope hope that the god that did it to them is able to do it again so the bible tells us that the things that were written aforetime every story every parable captured in scripture there is an intent to it the bible says it was written for our learning so every time we study scripture god expects that we will learn what do we learn we learn the character of god what do we learn we learn the ways of god what the bible calls the mysteries of the kingdom this is a conference essentially scripture contains three basic things number one scripture contains promises in scripture we find the promises god's bond god's commitment promises define the boundaries of god's bond and commitment to man number two in scripture we find principles what the bible calls the ways of god his modus operandi his methodologies god's strategy for achieving results are we together now so when we study scripture he shows us scripture shows us a road map 
that leads from desires to manifestations so i am able to study from scripture how to obtain hebrews 11 gives us an archive of those who use these truths to obtain results it says now faith is the substance of things hoped for he calls it the evidence of things not seen he says for by it elders obtained principles the principles of god are a representation of his system of justice so that whoever can find them regardless background regardless gender regardless the disadvantage before that time once you find it the bible says they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh i'm giving a background to my session it's important that we appreciate the ministry of the word for these reasons that the word of god scripture contains promises number two it contains principles we can study the word of god and learn not only the character of god we can learn the way he operates so we gain mastery in this kingdom by an accurate understanding of the ways of god this is what builds up into what we call dominion dominion happens to the degree to which we comprehend the mysteries of the kingdom number three we find in scripture prophecy prophecies are captured in scripture he does not leave us in limbo as to the future he wants believers to understand their destiny both short term and long term and we find the entire scope of a believer's journey past present and future in scripture because if our hope is only in this life the bible declares that we have all men most miserable so scripture contains prophecy it lets us know what is going to happen to us after now so that it does not leave us in fear because the character of love is that it casts out fear and if god should leave us in the dark without knowing what the future holds we will walk in fear and fear has the capacity to keep men in bondage if it is true that god is love then there should not be fear around him so everything that makes for the exiting of fear in the believer's life uncertainty brings fear this is why faith is the cure for fear our persuasion that even though i am not there i can rest my faith on a god who is alpha omega not and omega alpha omega he is not the beginning and the end he is both the beginning and at the same time he doesn't have to walk from the beginning to leave the end he can still be in the beginning while at the end so there's no such thing as god what you know as though he needs to leave the beginning to quickly peep into the future his realm does not have past does not have present does not have future his realm is not even eternity god's realm is called now that's his realm everything is bare before him are we together so when we study scripture listen carefully why am i saying this this is a conference and sadly because god is helping to build the body of christ we must help believers understand the importance of scripture the bible scripture is god's recommended pathway to knowing him and understanding his ways scripture is not the only way we know the realm of the spirit we can route through other sources and other channels but the bible leaves us with a disclaimer that if you follow any other way outside of scripture there is a side effect to your experience there will be a side effect to your experience when jesus came he said i am the way the way means the authorized channel i lead you to the truth reality that reality ministers life to you he says no man comes to the father that means i am also a bridge you never experience the father except through me i am the administrator of eternal life apostle john was speaking and he says this is the record that god had given us eternal life he said but he structured the administration of that life such that you must encounter the son before you have that life are we together so do not frown at any time you have to sit to learn scripture learning scripture is an is a way of deliverance deliverance from ignorance the bible says true knowledge shall the just be delivered 
now that God has given your conference such a powerful title we have to explore through scripture the only way we open gates or bring them down the only way we possess our possession the only way we advance in this scripture is to go to this manual and find out God's way of doing it mastery in this kingdom happens when we understand the secrets that are behind stories not the stories themselves a story in scripture never benefits you until the mystery behind it is unraveled this is how we excel are we together now so we explore scripture and we find there God's ways how do we bring down gates how do we bring down mountains is it unusual for a man to be in an experience where there are all kinds of gates and instruments of resistance scripture is that lecturer that enlightens us brings us into the place of knowledge i commend you to god he says and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified are we blessed having established this i like us to look at the book of joshua through my session the book of joshua is a very interesting book in the bible not only because i'm named after that book but then <laughs> hallelujah it is a very interesting book because it is one of the books in the bible that shows the valiancy of faith it shows how god is able to pick a man and guide that man and scatter through that book are mysteries the book is very open to show us what happens when we walk in keeping with god's ways and it is also open to show us that just because you won yesterday does not mean you win tomorrow you only win to the degree to which you walk in keeping with the truths that make for victory are we blessed so joshua chapter 6 please and then we'll back up to chapter 5 and then i'll just pick one thing for tonight we'll share and we'll pray are we still together joshua chapter 6 let's start from verse 1 we'll read with king james and then if there's any other version if that is possible if we can look at it after we read with king james maybe amplified or nit i want you to see something there that would be the basis for my teaching proper tonight the bible says now jericho was strictly shut up it was closed why because of the children of israel there was a reason why it was closed as a result nothing went in and nothing went out is there any other version we can look at just verse one the bible says now jericho a fenced town with high walls was tightly closed because of the israelites none went out or came in can we look at um i wish we can see niv beautiful no the scripture you just the version you just used now nlt thank you read with me everyone now the gates of jericho were tightly because stop 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 don't rush we this is a conference there was a reason why the people shot that place the bible says these people had fear operating in them so even though they had creativity before and they could build such a wall fear paralyzed them in a moment and for the fear of israelites they shot that place that was once a beauty to neighboring nations the bible says five chariots could stand on the wall what kind of a wall is that imagine a wall where five chariots could stand on if you collapse it it is still a wall now the question is what kind of motivation was given to those people to be able to build such a formidable structure are we together now once upon a time they came to that place they advanced to that region and the bible says they were able to build this formidable structure with strong gates and towers if you read 
I wish we had time you will see the security architecture of Jericho pastor the security architecture of Jericho was second to none the nation of Israel even though a covenant people they sneaked in and went to Rahab in a moment the news had gotten to the king that some people came their location was picked with accuracy what sort of a city is this follow me carefully don't trivialize Jericho I know it was destroyed but let's learn something from it first they sent somebody he came to Jericho they sneaked in and met a harlot and there was such an intelligent system in Jericho with precision the king had received the news some men came from Israel they came to spy how was their motive discerned and then they met Rahab she had to coin a story and he said pursue them beyond the Jordan and he opened the gates they went and closed now I'm, I'm trying to help you appreciate the fact that this city was not built by weak men but one information entered their camp and the moment that information entered their camp progress died a people who built such a fence a people who had such security architecture somebody introduced one information give us that scripture again now you will understand what you are reading now the gates what did they close help me what did they close the access that controlled their commerce the access that controlled their moving in and going out suffered not because the gate spoiled not because anything bad happened to it simply because of one factor was introduced they were afraid of the israelites the bible says as a result no one was allowed to go in no one was allowed to go out we're discussing gates we'll bring down jericho later but this night i want you to understand what can happen to a people how can a man be so powerful so saved so intelligent so creative with results to show and then just one information is introduced into the life of that man and he will prefer stagnation to advancement that a man prefers to remain the same let our economy suffer yes let our reputation go down yes remember they only heard they had not seen them it was just a rumor that is possible you may be liable to an attack and because of that every activity that makes for progress suffered everybody say fear shout it again this night we're dealing with some of the forces before we talk about these gates there seems to be something that fear is able to do to men listen carefully that even though it is an invisible enemy the presence and the devastating effect of it can be physical and you can relate with joshua chapter 1 when we start with that book now they were mourning moses please give it to us joshua chapter one the bible says now after the death of moses the servant of the lord it came to pass that the lord spake unto joshua the son of Nun, moses's minister saying moses my servant is dead now therefore arise go over prophesy to someone say go over. go over one more time say go over. go over the guy was sitting there in fear what do i do with a people so great how do i lead these people to a place of destiny please keep that scripture and god said my servant is dead now arise go over this jordan thou and all these people unto the land which i do give them even unto the children of israel verse 3 it says every place hallelujah that the sole of your foot shall tread upon 
that I have given unto you as I said unto Moses someone shout amen, amen. from the wilderness and this Lebanon even to the great river you know let me pause for a minute and let's celebrate God here look at God sharing land as if there are no enemies there you see when God talks to you he talks like he's talking to himself he does not talk like he's seen any limitation when you build that house give this one to this church and while he's saying that all you have in your account is five thousand naira and he will never talk about that limitation this is God allocating lands with giants and fierce people please sit down give us that scripture from the wilderness and this Lebanon even unto the great river the river Euphrates the land of the Hittites the great sea towards the going down of the sun it shall be your coast and there shall no man be able to stand before you all the days of your life hold on this was the reason why he removed the sword when that angel appeared because of this word God, you gave me a covenant. Who is this man? Who are you? And the man had to answer. He said, no, no, no. Are you for us or against us? Because a word was given to him that as I go, I don't know what I will face, but I know one thing that I'm victorious. There is a word before me. We are exploring scripture. Please leave that scripture. And then he says, verse 5, I will not fail you nor forsake you. Verse 6, be strong another word for be strong is fear not and be of good courage now that I've spoken to you about advancement there is something that is in men I want to take it out of you otherwise you will not make progress now that I have encouraged you I have shown you the allocations of your destiny there is something that is common to all men I need to go through a surgery with you if I do not remove it all this will remain as prophecy mountains will remain mountains prophecy will remain prophecy dreams will remain dreams visions will remain dreams visions it says be strong and of good courage for unto these people you shall divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them only thou be strong and very why would God emphasize such a thing he said mr. man I don't want to threaten you but there are things you are going to see on the way there are things you are going to hear on the way there are people you are going to see on the way do not mind Jeremiah chapter 1 please sit down Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 5 Jeremiah now we have seen how God was calling and preparing Joshua let's see what he did to little Jeremiah and before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, he says, Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained. To ordain means to commission. To ordain means to legitimize an operation. I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. Are we together? Next verse. Then said I, the young boy is speaking now. Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak. Why? for I am a child I love the Lord he rebuked him immediately he says say not I am a child for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee and whatsoever I command thee thou shalt speak next verse do you see it here again there is something about great men that if a surgery does not happen to you you can have dreams and have visions but when you start that journey without this spiritual surgery you may not arrive he told him be not afraid be not afraid of their faces for i am with thee to deliver you saith the lord jericho a land that is so that is it as an architectural masterpiece with such level of intelligence and security but as soon as fear 
was introduced into that system not even their creativity could function immediately everything paralyzed listen to me tonight in the name of jesus in this place the lord has sent me to perform this spiritual surgery and and crush the spirit of fear out of someone's life and out of someone's destiny that's why i told you don't worry we are coming to gates but this night there is a lesson we must learn please give us chapter 6 and verse 1 again nlt now the gates of jericho now the gates of creativity now the gates of advancement now the gates of progress suddenly became shut because the people were afraid now the gates of higher levels of ministry now the gates of greater exploits in ministry now the gates of signs and wonders now the gates of the healing anointing now the gates of supernatural manifestations became short because in as much as you are anointed and blessed as you began to advance you heard that there is a spirit that can destroy men you heard that there is an influence that can come and interrupt your growth fear is dangerous was it not fear that stopped the crusades was it not fear that stopped the instruction from god go and lay hands on the sick what if i pray and nothing happens what if people record it and they put it online what if they record my failure when in the days of social media what if i pray for that dead body and because of that the gate was shut nothing went out and nothing went in in one minute i'd like you to pray that every spirit of fear over my life Oh, please be serious over my destiny in the name of jesus christ i come against you by the god of heaven i come against you by the god of heaven following online pray in the name of jesus the son of the living god hallelujah in the name of jesus please sit down hebrews chapter 2 please hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14 we're learning from apostle paul hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14 we can go back to king james now hebrews chapter 2 the bible says for as much then as children are partakers of flesh and blood he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death which is the devil verse 15 read with me please one to read and deliver them who through fear of death fear of anything leads to bondage fear of success fear of advancement please pay attention because there are many of you here in spite of the prophetic word that continues to come from the man of god over your life there are ministries locked up within your spirit there are mantles and anointings there are graces spiritual investments after the fasting after the prayer after the night vigil now it's time to advance and fear comes and shuts the gate nothing goes out nothing goes in listen to me the bible tells us in second timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 that fear is a spirit there is a psychology to fear but fear second timothy fear is a spirit second timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 for god had not given look up please that means 
if you ever find fear in your life you received it as a gift someone gave it but god is saying in that giving i am innocent i'm not the one who gave it listen carefully fear only comes to receive us it is not only money that comes to receive us hmm. we're dealing with giving and receiving here please give us that scripture god had not given us the spirit of fear but he has given us power love look at the tripartite forces that must exist for one spirit to live don't you downplay fear that for a man to deal with fear there has to be a revelation of power there has to be a revelation of love there has to be a revelation of transformation God has not given us the spirit of fear fear is given it can be rejected it can be received this is very powerful the assignment of fear listen carefully the assignment of fear fear works like a prophetic word because when you become afraid you give power to what you are afraid of listen carefully the only way what you are afraid of can have power over you is to bring you to a psychological state where you are afraid fear is confidence in the object of the fear it is true it's not just a cliche it is true that when you manifest fear you are giving confidence to the object of the fear what is the purpose of fear to gain access to your imagination to gain access to your creativity to gain access to your expectations job chapter 3 and verse 25 job 3 25 job said for the thing which i greatly fear what happened to it is come upon me that means fear has magnetic properties fear can attract to your life what you are afraid of you are afraid of death you are afraid of accident you are afraid of plane crash you are afraid of failure you are afraid of this and that and job said this is a mystery that the thing that a man can greatly fear is the thing he attracts to his life the thing which i greatly feared is come upon me and that which i was afraid of is come unto me so when god begins to launch men listen carefully after giving them all the encouragement he will tell them there is something i need to take out of you it is not unusual in men to fear but then when you begin to fear you will never be able to do so much fear can impede the passion the force the zest to move forward because when god gives you instructions he will open up to you a destiny that only god can fulfill god cannot give you a destiny that men fulfill he will give you a destiny that only god can fulfill why because he's the one who will work with you to make it happen please pay attention this night the purpose of fear is to gain access to your imagination when you begin to think fear the devil uses the sense realm and all the things that happen around you to plant fear in you can i tell you what fear does fear can deflate your hope fear can deflate your expectations all of a sudden the zest and the fire you have to move forward suddenly goes down if you will ever raise the dead in your life your first assignment is to have the courage to stand before one 
if you will ever buy a land in your life your first assignment is to have the courage to look at one land and say how much and they mention an amount you are almost falling down and you say no way mm -mm. listen carefully can i tell you this behind the exploits of champions is a revelation that has given them an indefinite immunity against fear champions are men but they are not ordinary men they are men who have received a spiritual vaccination against fear they have sustained the ability to defy fear they have mastered fear and they know how to conquer it and so they move from one level of triumph even to another you will never be able to bear glory i can imagine what happened to your wonderful man of god when god sent him here do you realize that once upon a time this facility was a flat ground yet your pastor was already sharing rooms on a bare ground let this one be an office when you see champions operate they look like madmen but there, there is an audacity that knowing god produces let me tell you believe what i'm telling you because if it's success you are looking for i wish i were lying i would have just told you i'm sorry there are serious giants and gates giants are not only metals there are people also who are gates when the bible says lift up your head oh ye gates the gates were not metals they were people they spoke back they said who wants to enter we are not used to opening no can i tell you something oh david one day you will stand before goliath the key to the throne is in the pocket of goliath you must have the courage to bring him down to get to the throne we live in a world that is so risk averse so fearful full of prophecy full of fasting full of prayer but when it's time to move this is why many remain stagnated forever there are ceos today who are supposed to be feeding nations and blessing territories they remain with piles of prophecy one impartation one bottle of oil on their head after another and yet they do not move there are people who are supposed to be doing exploits in ministry not from a standpoint of flesh there are healing evangelists that are supposed to be packing stadiums and bringing glory to the name of the lord but because of fear there are books that are supposed to be blessing nations today if i write what is the guarantee we live in a world of guarantees i cannot move can you guarantee me learn how to drive give me a guarantee what if i have an accident i'm no longer a slave to fear i am the child of god that i'm no longer a slave to fear let me touch on something and we'll pray is god helping you tonight shake off that fear whilst you are sitting you came for a conference after this conference we should hear testimonies that in one week you carried five years through courage and put it in that one week you smash every gate before you you open the gate of There are three fears that you must overcome in your life if you want to make progress. There are three fears. There is no one who has done much for the kingdom who has not conquered these three levels and dimensions of fear. Are you ready? Number one, the fear of the past. The fear of the past philippians chapter 3 and verse 13 the past is the past can can administer fear to you here's what paul said brethren i count myself to have i i count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing i do forgetting the things that are behind 
and reaching forth to the things that are look at me almost every part of your body you can move it front and back except your eyes because it was not in God's design that there should be any reason you can move your leg back and front your hand back and front but the eyes was designed to look forward ever forward only if you want to turn your eyes you must turn your head and turn part of your body that's too much inconvenience God designed it that way so that you will know that it's not his will for you to continue to turn back biologically it is easier to look forward than to turn back listen carefully this one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind can I tell you this fear is a very dangerous spirit it can carry yesterday and want to relieve it in your life today yes you failed yesterday you started a company and it failed you started ministry and it failed you organized a crusade and you laid hands on the sick and it looked like nothing happened you left that crusade ground as if you were returning from a funeral you went back home and you said god did you call me and so chances are that when god instructs you again yesterday the memory of yesterday has such a passion to leap into your today you have to obtain grace from god to cut that string that connects you to yesterday there are many people who would have been doing so much for the kingdom but yesterday you want to rise and yesterday tells you did your father not try this did your are you the only pastor in your area did they not try living by divine health did they not try tithing did they not try giving and when yesterday overwhelms you you are unable to do anything the fear of the past there are many people who cannot rise up today and do great things because the voice of yesterday seems louder than the passion that will move them today and tomorrow i came tonight joining faith with your pastor in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god every connection between you and yesterday we cut it forever we cut it forever listen to me when nathaniel heard about jesus he laughed and said can anything good come out of nazareth i hope you know nathaniel was not lying there was a track record he was speaking based on facts dr munro of blessed memory he says the fact is the present state of a thing the truth is that thing as designed by god the fact is the present state of anything You did ministry yesterday and you failed you prayed for the sick you failed you started a business you failed you went to school you failed you applied for a job you failed and the devil can use those things to impede you he will use the voice of men and he will tell you you cannot make progress but he speaks to you tonight his majesty fear not when they came to jesus and jesus was wandering gave them a word over the catch they said master there is a history we have toiled all night before you came we've been doing it he says but nevertheless somebody say nevertheless yeah. prophesy say nevertheless yeah. yes i prayed for you yesterday and you were not healed but it's not the yesterday version that is coming to you now between yesterday and today Saul has encountered Samuel I know that I did not have the prophetic grace to know where the donkey was missing but while you are rejoicing over the weak Saul he has met Samuel and received an anointing and is now one of the prophets listen this is one of the dangers of being around people who used to know you 
because they always think the version of you they knew is the version that remains. They, they did not meet the version that has received an impartation. They did not meet the version that has prayed and fasted. They didn't meet the version that has now been mentored. They met you when you just came into Abuja. Ignorant of spiritual principles. A non titer you are not a giver, not established in the house of God. So your, your lack of results, well, that's the testimony they have. Every time they mention your name, they trace it to that. Jesus died, but he only died for three days. Don't talk about the dead Jesus when he's already resurrected. As at when they met you, January, you have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You didn't seem to take God seriously. But let me tell you this, from January till now, they didn't know you came to water life. They didn't know the fire that came from this altar upon your spirit. It is very natural for people to trace you to the version of you they used to know and that can be dangerous some of those people can even be your family members when they hear that this man is now serving God they laugh and they say the last time we checked this guy was a broke failure who did not know God what suddenly happened Oh, do not laugh at Samuel. While he's looking for the missing donkey, there is an angel leading him to encounter a prophet and then encounter a grace that will make him king. Go and ask any successful man who has made constructive advancement in the kingdom. They will tell you they had to conquer the fear of yesterday. Who predicted your failure without prophesying it and they were right so many times hear me there are many of us under the sound of my voice listening to me while you are hearing me speak the holy ghost is telling you this is what i've been showing you in dreams this is what i've been showing you in visions that if you do not rise your family will never rise because the mantle of the liberty the advancement of your family is upon your shoulder but fear every time you want to rise you say oh god i'm a stammerer stammerer moses oh god i want to rise but abraham time has gone i am too old holy men kill all of our excuses fear of the past the first time we organized a crusade the car spoiled on the way three hours to the crusade ground to the crusade time we had not arrived and we didn't have money to call any mechanic it took faith and worship to get that car back when we got true story when we got to that crusade ground the ladies who were cooking were also the ladies in the choir we didn't have any luxury of hiring anybody the bills were paid by faith you, you understand what i'm saying when they finish the crusade you tell everybody go and then you who said god sent you you now have to wait and defend you make your calling and your election show so chances are that after such a horrible experience when god says go again you say god I'm tired of looking like a fool before this war. God speaks to you and tells you you are going to become a mighty vessel in the hands of God. They gave you Bible study in your house to lead. You forgot every scripture. They gave you one week to rehearse and pray. The only thing you remembered was opening prayer. The jotting disappeared and you messed up and your father you know that's how parents look at you with compassion mixed with disappointment is this the person who is going to take over from me and you return back and your loved one said no problem you have a certificate there's an opening somewhere to get a job because it doesn't look like this ministry will work 
and you return back and God tells you, are you ready for us to continue the lecture? He does not even talk about your failure. You came for a conference. The Lord is speaking to you. Can I tell you this? The reason why there are very few people who ever succeed in this kingdom is because there are few people who have the courage to look at yesterday and say, I refuse to be emotionally connected to you. I wave you goodbye and I force you to wave me back. I failed yesterday, but the prophetic grace is still there. I laid hands on the sick and they were not healed. I know. The courage to break free from the past. The courage to break free from the past. You have good or bad. They can do the same thing to you. Are we together? Chances are that you are born again and you love God filled with the Holy Spirit. You return back to an area where you grew up and you see all your friends. That perhaps maybe you used to live your life, maybe a wayward life together with them. And they say, we hear that they call you reverend now. And they laugh and clap and say, you mean God has, God, all God's army have, be, have died for God to find you. And you feel stupid for answering the call. When they say opening prayer and you say they don't even close their eyes because based on your version of you yesterday can i tell you this when god allows people to laugh at you is not to mock you is to be witnesses so that when he honors you they can say we were there we were there this one did not fake it we saw him when he was failing God allowed your failure public so that your honor will also be public. The fear of the past. Sit down please. Few minutes. We're almost done. Just give me five minutes and we're done tonight. The second kind of fear that you must conquer is the fear of the present. The fear of the present. Another word the fear of being controversial <laughs> goodness my god the emotional discomfort or the emotional comfort that comes with looking good in the eyes of men look up please let me teach you something if you want to be great in life you must obtain grace from God to build a wall of spiritual immunity against all kinds of expectations of men. It is better to serve God and fear God sincerely. You will lose too many things in your life trying to please men. Let me give you an advice. When your life is excellent, both God and men will rejoice with you. But can I give you an honest advice? You must obtain grace from God to focus on God and your destiny many of us love men so much you would rather fail God and have a good name with men rather fail God do you have the courage to survive the controversy of the prophecy upon your life oh Mary how did you get pregnant tell us the truth what happened I'm an innocent young virgin. An angel suddenly appears to me and says a ghost is coming. I am innocent. To the point where Joseph said, I'm sorry. I love you sincerely. You know I'm a responsible man. But this, this, this embarrassment is too much. Just when he was about to leave her, he had a dream. And he said, no, Joseph, this woman is surviving something and that which is coming out of her is that which carries destiny. Can I tell you this? If you do not obtain grace to respect your vision and your prophecy more than your reputation, you must respect the prophecy upon your life more than your reputation. The prophecy upon your life will make you do things sometimes that you will look controversial. What do you mean by go around the city seven times do you know what it means to watch an adult go around the city seven times to bring down a fence is that how it is done 
do you know what it means to empty your account and say God said you have a wife and children you know what it means for your relatives to hear that news that God gave an instruction to resign from your job the controversy that comes with the honor of vision and prophecy if anyone ever told you it's a bed of roses to become a champion think again behind these crowns that you so admire is audacity and courage Abraham take now your son go to a place I will show you where oh God keep going the fact that you want me to kill my son question when Abraham was done killing his son what will he tell the radio station what will he tell the TV ministry what will he tell the authorities over his life that God said you should kill your son does God behave that way I'm describing the journey that some of you are in right now God gave you an assignment to fast two months and while you're fasting someone is already calling you and saying look wisdom is profitable to direct this thing you are doing with your life even you you don't know the name of I'm not talking about foolishness I'm talking about divine direction are we together yes. there are some of you just when people are rushing to move forward God says you remain here and for three years you are in the same position and do you know sometimes God does not give you the complete answer so when men call you you still look stupid give me the correct logical answer the only thing I know is that I had him he said for two years keep supporting pastor and his wife that is it so what about the dreams and the visions you saw I don't know he's not spoken to me do you know the courage to move forward is the courage to withstand the controversy that comes with prophecy vision speak in the end not the beginning are we blessed I've had the honor and the privilege of talking with extremely great and successful people both in the faith in the business world in politics and unanimously Christians and non-Christians they will tell you that they had to withstand the courage there are times that as a man of God you may not have money to eat or to do whatever and yet someone comes to you for counseling suddenly wisdom comes you will impart grace you are solving the problem of others and say okay God what about my own and he's silent he's saying just keep moving father this sickness that is plaguing my child can there be a way out and heaven is silent another person comes and boom word of knowledge you are solving their problems and you lock the door they said this man you are so powerful and you say lord it's us again and god keeps quiet i reckon that the sufferings romans chapter 8 let me teach you the way of champions oh great ones because these are some of the messages you will not hear again but this is how great men are made you came to this conference to be made hmm. there is a way that people rise in this kingdom it is the reason why through the sacrifice of that death when they rise they don't just rise with an anointing there is a throne in heaven that backs them demons are testaments of their rising and the things they go through Jesus I know Paul I know who are you some of you are crying don't be ashamed I didn't come to make you cry I came to show you the truth if it is glory you want to come out of you can you drink of his cup and be baptized with his baptism there are things you cannot cast away you only obtain grace to pass through did you hear what I said Yes, sir. Isaiah 43 and verse 1 and 2 fear not O Israel I have redeemed you I have called you by name you are mine verse 2 it says when thou passest through the waters I will be with you I won't take the water away I will be with you when you go through the river it shall not overflow you when you walk through the fire it shall not burn you the making of the great is a very difficult spiritual process you want to birth glory there is a relationship between death and glory we're dealing with fear 
the fear of the present the fear of the present what gives me the guarantee that as i do ministry now i will succeed what gives me the guarantee that partners will come and hold my hands what gives me the guarantee that with 300,000 naira, if I start this building project, will I not become a mockery to everybody? And heaven is saying, move. The signs follow. They don't go before you. Start moving. The river does not part until you are inside. Are we together? Look at me. Everything that is glorious moves against status quo everything that has prophecy and destiny is usually unusual in its manifestation do you have the courage to endure do you have the courage to not try to defend yourself even while you move god told you you have a bank you have failed and failed and failed and failed and someone says come i will give you a job let's stop punishing your wife and yet you want to sleep and you have the vision of the bank again and god is saying i have spoken it and it will happen go and read about the global brands you see all over the world don't just read their success stories read their failure stories go and read about the men and the women of god that you honor in the body of christ today and see the scars that are on them Testaments of endurance. Time will fail me to talk of Gideon, Jephthah, and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions, but they entered the den of lions. Your Jesus, the grave where death finishes, is also where resurrection starts. Resurrection does not happen outside the grave. You want to experience resurrection power? It only happens to those who are in the grave. The last time I came here to preach, I taught you something about the mystery of the prison. I told you the prison is where both good and bad people meet. The fear of the present. Lastly for tonight and then we'll pray. The fear of the future the third fear that you must overcome this is especially true for people who are already bearing fruit can I tell you this please look up most times when you are producing results exceptional results it gets to a point where you start becoming afraid of your results you know why because when you rise to the top the fear now is to finish and to finish well most times when people pray for great people their prayer is may you finish well now that you have shown us that you can conquer yesterday and you can conquer today our prayer for you is that you finish well can i tell you this the hand that lifted you can keep you even till you finish be careful because sometimes you can hear men and they tell you stories of people who did not finish well they may be right and they may be well-meaning but can i tell you there is a covenant that brought you thus far and that covenant is able to keep god is not only a giver he's a keeper he's a keeper but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded the bible says that he is able to keep that which is committed to him against that day what gives you a guarantee that this great church and your pastor will still be standing 20 30 40 years from now there is the grace that keeps listen to me most successful people are afraid of their future they are not afraid of their past they are not afraid of today but what if this happens what if a pandemic comes and my business goes down can i tell you this it is it is more it is more painful and embarrassing to rise up and go down it's better that you remain down you were once a billionaire you were once on fire you were once a prophet you were once packing up crusades with signs and wonders so most times when people succeed that fear comes 
will I last? What will become of my children? What will the newspaper say about me tomorrow? Ah. The Lord is my light and he's the light of my life. I will not be afraid. The hands that lifted me will uphold me to the end. No fear. I will not be afraid. Listen. I bring you words of comfort. If it is by kingdom principles you rose, I want to tell you those principles are potent to keep you to the end. That when the fire goes up and down, when the vicissitudes of life goes up and down, you are still standing in ministry, in life, even till the end. This is the reason why you must be afraid of your results if they were not built by the word. Because it is only the word that sustains the power to keep things. This is where the arrogant of successful people outside of God, they tell you we are successful. But if it is not by God, allow the wind to come. Allow the rain come. It will beat on both the house that is built on a rock and sand. But if your life is built on a rock, you need not be afraid. Listen to me. This is my conviction as a man of God. This must be your conviction. Sincere people will meet you and say, I pray that God keeps you. This is how so-so so person started. But unfortunately, this is how so-so so person started. This is how so-so so bank started. This is how so-so so started. When they say those things, appreciate them with truth. But turn back and have confidence about the future. Because you leave, Jesus, I leave. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Because you leave, Jesus, I leave today. I leave to praise your name. I leave to praise your name I have no fear of what tomorrow brings Jeremiah 29 verse 11 please rise up on your feet we are about from here for I know the thoughts that I think over what a life over Reverend Godwin and his wife over the membership of this church I'm not confused about what I'm thinking about them the pandemic, yes sir the economy of nations yes sir, I still know the thoughts that I think he calls them thoughts of peace and not of evil, there are people who think evil of others they laugh with you but they are hoping something bad happens as a negative prophecy God is not one of them thoughts of peace are not of evil to give you an hold on he didn't say to give you an end the end is not guesswork the end is expected I have programmed it already I am Alpha Omega can I tell you this believers hear me Many of you who are under the mentorship of this great man and his wife, do not be afraid of what you are becoming. You are being built on the word and you may not look like it but find strength. There is a making. When a woman is cooking, sometimes all you see is water and you don't really know what is. Is it yam? Is it rice? Just be patient. As that fire under is working on that pot, suddenly an aroma that begins to attract you from the parlor what in the world is going on in this kitchen everybody say making oh the maker is making you salt is not the only thing that will be added there there are ingredients that you add only towards the end women am i correct one ingredient in five minutes can change the narrative of that soup Hmm. Hear me. 
just because the anointing of your call has not come yet does not mean it will not come keep moving one day while you are serving like you are doing every day one day while you are praying like you are doing every day conquering fear to move forward and then that grace will rest upon you and the nations will be ready to hear you please hear me brothers and sisters it was fear not a physical army that made jericho to hide they never saw a physical army with swords yet but they just heard the same way you heard that there are people who don't live long the same way you heard that there are people who serve god though and yet it looks like their end be careful what you hear be careful what you see define your realities by the word of god i have heard that people trust god and they still become broke failures i have heard that people trust god as men of god they serve god sincerely and yet it looks like there is no consolation to their christian experience be careful it was the hearing of the ear that made people who should advance with such investment did you know the treasures that were in jericho by the time the wall of jericho fell down look the kind of treasure that they met yet in the midst of that treasure what happened they locked right now we are going to pray because in the name of jesus i came releasing my faith with your pastor it is time for someone's destiny to open up some of you because of fear you close the notebook the holy ghost asks you to buy there was a notebook you bought that every time he comes to you you write matters of destiny for months now you've not opened it go back this night after this conference regardless what you heard by the time i was writing this apostle my mother was still alive my father was still alive how could god let them die i don't think he's faithful i don't believe those visions we are saying faithful are you lord faithful are you lord. faithful are you lord. we are saying faithful are you lord. faithful are you lord faithful are you lord hallelujah are you ready to pray the spirit of fear listen to me i'm not here to talk about myself but this man you see standing before you i cannot begin to tell you the dangerous instructions that god has given me in my life the things to do that if i ever failed in those instructions that testimony will be a memorial and a warning to nations and yet by faith we closed our eyes away from our backgrounds we closed our eyes away from status quo and we said lord we trust you if we perish we perish this man you call your pastor and your father you see him stand here and you just laugh but this man is a testament of endurance he will tell you of times that even though he said yes lord it was with tears in his eyes his wife is here as a testament results don't just happen no if you see men possess the land go behind that land you will see the graves of giants there they killed giants and buried them run away from any land where you would see only champions without the graves of giants even jesus has his grave to show are we together i'm not wasting your time i want you to make constructive progress there are some of you god gave you a word and if you had obeyed god and moved in faith by now 
you would sustain the grace and the resources to override the bills of conferences like this based on your vision god told you by now you should start doing it but for five years you've been given excuses in fear god is speaking to you are you going to choose to honor me and experience glory this beginning of miracles john 2 said that jesus did in the presence of his disciples and he showed forth his glory what was the miracle an instruction take this risk the risk of death fetch water and go and meet the rulers those days they didn't correct by counseling you died immediately once you did anything against the king how could you tell me to fetch water people are thirsty and you say fetch it and start moving Lord should I really move move these rulers are thirsty I don't want to embark this is a feast it's not a rehearsal move recently sir as I round up I was in Bonny Island I had the honor of visiting the first cathedral not only in Nigeria but across maybe Central or West Africa about a hundred and fifty years old where men like Samuel, Ajayi Crowder, Joseph Johnson, all these men were there. I had the opportunity to look at these things. And I saw an old pulpit. And while they were giving me an orientation about what happened there, they said the man, I saw an emblem of fire. The man was going to preach. And just when he was going to preach, he found out that he forgot his notes. There was nothing there. And yet he was going to talk to people that was a moment of destiny if he did not deliver at that moment he would bring reproach to Christianity and while he stood there confused in fear he decided I will move anyway and that was when the spirit of revelation fell on him and in a way he could not explain he began to teach scriptures can I tell you this one of the ways that God defeats fear in your life is by bringing you face to face with it That the thing that you are afraid of God brings you face to face you stare at it it stares at you then you will find out after a while that you are no longer afraid of it again the Lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall I be afraid of When I saw that I was so blessed, I was so inspired. Christianity came to this country because of the sacrifices of men like so. And right now, hear me. You are standing, we are about to pray. The destinies of many are upon your shoulder. And God is telling you it's time to move forward. Even as we look forward to and hasten the day of his coming. This 11th hour of this global harvest God is looking for men and women of courage of courage and strength it's time to conquer fear it's time to call it what it is you are a spirit and I'm tired of living in fear if it be thou bid me come and he said come this is what God is telling someone it's time to learn to walk on water the water will not change to cement oh dear child of god there are times he can pass the sea there are times he can say walk on it the most important thing is that he's the one speaking whatsoever he says to do do it are you ready to pray prayer point number one i conquer the spirit of fear i call you by name and i declare that your power and your influence is broken over my life lift your voice and pray Lift your voice and pray. What a life. Shadeka Baraka Doske Berekata. The spirit of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear. But the spirit of power, of love, of a sound mind. Someone is praying. I rebuke the spirit of fear. I cost the spirit of fear over my life. Cost it over your children. Cost it over.
over your ministry, your business, in the name of Jesus. Someone is praying the fear of death, the fear of limitation, the fear of weakness, the fear of ministry. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you are going to mention everything you know that seems to be a fear limiting you. Call it by name and say in the name of Jesus, I come by the blood against you. Lift your voice and pray. Is it finances? Is it your health? Is it your children? Call it by name and declare in the name of Jesus. Who are down mountain before the river bell? Before the river bell, thou shalt be made plain. And you are going to declare that instead of fear, the spirit of grace to advance. And as you pray, I'd like you to move forward prophetically. Grace to advance. Lift your voice and pray. I advance by grace. I conquer fear. The grace to advance. The grace to advance. In the name of Jesus. The grace to advance in ministry. The grace to advance in career. The grace to advance by the power of the Holy Ghost. The grace to advance in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalms 18 verse 29. We're wrapping up. Hmm. Psalms 18 and verse 29. Everybody please read. It's projected. One to read. For by thee I have run through a troop. By my God I have leaped over a wall. Is someone ready to pray? Father, the grace to run through a troop and leap over a wall. I obtain that grace. Lift your voice and pray. Financial walls, marital walls, ministry walls, I leap over in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, we are wrapping up. Please make it as a covenant. That you will not miss the remaining sessions of this conference i want to pray for you hallelujah our time is gone i apologize but let me just i just saw light coming on four people i want you to bring them here this light because i'm seeing that tonight there is a massive deliverance not only from the spirit of fear but the effect of that fear 
on God's people. I'm stretching my hands. Please bring them. I just saw that light. I have to pray that prayer. The power of God is coming on them, that light. And I want you to just bring them here. Help them, please. Bring them. Command the spirit of fear. You are a spirit and we decree and declare. The spirit of fear. I release my faith with that of Reverend Godwin Aban who are declaring fear over God's people. My God, my God. You came to church. This house is a house of power. We declare fear by the spirit of grace. In the name of Jesus, let God's people go now. Shout a loud amen. Let God's people go now. 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 Hear me. Every spirit of fear that has stopped you from making progress, tying down families, tying down destinies, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I command that spirit, go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. name of Jesus Christ the word for you is fear not God himself is standing by you like a mighty terrible warrior fear not in the name of Jesus Christ be blessed and experience the grace of God in Jesus name please be seated God bless you Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16 Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16 it says thus saith the Lord stand ye in the ways and see and as for the old parts where is the good way and walk therein and it declares that you shall find rest for your soul this is a very powerful and instructive road for the believer. It says, stand in the way and ask for the path. And when you are told, when you find it, be diligent to walk in it. And it leaves you with an assurance that you will find rest for your soul. Here we began to talk about the power of the word of God, scripture. I started by again reminding us of the power that is contained in the word of god that the word of god defines and describes god's modus operandi the way 
that we obtain results in the kingdom has been revealed to us through scriptures scattered in stories scattered in parables scattered in prophecies are the secrets of the kingdom hallelujah jesus was teaching the disciples and he said because it has been given unto you matthew 13 11, it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven it takes keys in this kingdom to be able to open and close revelation chapter 3 from verse 8 revelation chapter 3 from verse 8 let's go to verse 7 let's start from verse 7 revelations 3 and to the angel of the church in philadelphia write this thing saith he that is holy and he that is true he is not only holy he is not only true but he has a key there is a key that he has called the key of david and with that key he is able to open and no man shutteth and he is able to shut and no man open it so it is on the strength of keys that we open it is on the strength of keys that we shut we do not just open because we intend for gates to be opened we do not shut because we intend for gates to be shut it takes keys everybody say keys keys so this morning we're going to examine acts chapter 12 the lord is going to be revealing a key in the book of acts chapter 12 and then we will pray worthy is the lamb of god acts 12 verse 1 the church at this time was beginning to expand and gain grounds the gospel was beginning to gain ascendance and there were all kinds of threats that were happening to the apostles verse 1 now acts 12 now about that time herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church so the plot was against the church verse 2 he killed james remember james the brother of G of john with the sword verse 3 and because he saw that it pleased the jews how can you kill a man and see that it pleased another then want to kill another one anyone that stands your way in this season in the name of jesus anyone whose pain who whose joy comes from your pain i decree and i declare may shame and reproach never depart from their life this is a very interesting scripture that you kill a man for the gospel and people clap for you and you say i see that you like this then i'm about to go and do it again verse 3 and because he saw that it pleased the jews he proceeded further to take peter also then were the days of unleavened bread and when he had apprehended him and put him in prison look at the state of this man the apostle of the lamb are we together now to bind him is already enough disaster for the gospel but he put him in prison number two delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers intending after easter to bring him forth before the people so peter was kept in prison but something that did not happen to james was happening to peter but prayer was made without season keyword without season keyword without season of the church unto god for him next verse when herod would have brought him forth the same night peter was sleeping between two soldiers look at this kind of oppression that the soldiers would not even allow him liberty in the prison if he slept left or right he will be on a soldier to confirm that he's still there bound with two chains 
and the keepers before the door that kept the prison and behold the angel of the lord came upon him and a light shined in prison and he smote peter on his side and raised him up saying arise up quickly and his chains fell off his hands and the angel said unto him gird thyself and bind thy sandal so he did and he said unto him cast thy garment about thee and follow me he went out and followed him and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel but thought he was in a vision he saw a vision the bible says when they were past the first and the second word the word word there is also synonymous to the word gate it says they came to a gate called the iron gate the gate that led to the city and the bible says it opened to them of his own accord and they went out and passed through one street forthwith the angel departed came to the gate that kept him bound and that iron gate opened and you would think that would be the end of the story we're still reading now when peter was come to himself he said now i know of a shorty that the lord had sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of herod and from the expectation of the people of the jews and when he had considered the thing he came to the house of mary the mother of john watch this now whose surname is mark where they were gathered together praying so they were praying somewhere and then an angel came in response to that prayer brought peter out through that gate but when peter knocked at the door of the gate a damsel came to her her name rhoda 14 and when she knew peter's voice she opened not the gate ah, ah. look up <laughs> this is a very interesting scripture i just came out of a gate of evil and intending to enter a place of rest now you who is supposed to be for me i am knocking the gates you pray that i should come out now the gate that leads me to rest the gate that led me to bondage i came out of it but the gate that leads to my rest now you are refusing to open it keep that scripture she opened not the gate not for sorrow for gladness but ran in and told how peter stood before the gate hear what happened you need to pray for grace to know when what comes is your prayer the answer to prayer they were praying lord deliver this man bring him safely now this is the answer to their prayer and they said unto her thou art mad but she constantly affirmed it that it was even so and they said no it is his angel the miracle is in verse 16 everybody read but peter continued knocking Mm, the gates that would not open peter continued knocking and when they had opened the door they saw him and they were astonished listen very carefully there is a powerful key here that is responsible for swinging gates even ancient gates open now i told you that you only benefit from scripture when you draw out the mysteries behind the stories if all you know is just the stories or the parables it will not bless you hidden in every story in scripture is a spiritual mystery a key that if found can grant you grace to command tear some dimensions of results so the bible starts by telling us that a man was in a very negative situation didn't matter what got him there the most important thing is that he was now there are we together now in prison again all kinds of oppression around that man to the point that the bible does not tell us peter was praying i pray that you find intercessors because there are times that even the great can be overwhelmed you, you can imagine the level of pain bound with over eight soldiers supervisors at the gate and then chains again 
there are times where it will be difficult for you to pray but the bible says the church said we may not have the power to come and fight herod but we know how to bring the government of heaven to bear and the bible says prayer was made continually listen carefully believers prayer was made continually continually without ceasing unto god for him so the angel came in response to the prayer and he came and delivered him in a very spectacular manner he opened that door and brought peter out and even peter himself thought he was just having a vision and he brought him past the first word the second word do you know when you read the remaining part of that story all of those soldiers were killed because that security was too maximum no human under any condition would have the power to escape even if you got out of that prison how do you escape the first gate then the second gate then the third gate it described the material that was used he said it was called the iron gate don't tell me god cannot bring deliverance don't tell me god cannot open doors you are only looking at what is there before he shows up when god shows up none of those gates was a challenge whatsoever the bible says they open on their own accord so there are gates listen carefully there are gates that shut men keep men in bondage close the door of your relevance the door of your influence access to the glory and the grace of god upon your life the word glory comes from the hebrew word kabod many words really the hebrew is kabod and the principal greek word for glory is doxa what that means it refers to the weightiness to understand the word glory you have to understand how they measured uh, money those days their coins and all of that the weightiness of a person or a thing the root word of the word glory is also the word wealth a description of the extent of the excellency of a person or a thing are we together now yes and so this man was now inhibited by gates both human and material gates are not only metallic resistances human beings can be gates for or against you when a man sits down and his signature what must lead to your promotion that man is a gate they are gatekeepers someone can decide and say as far as i'm in this office you are not rising for whatever reason and they make something that is so easy to become so difficult because they have become gates now the bible says the church began to pray continually we pray for the deliverance of peter my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by your deliverer is coming your deliverer is standing by let me tell you something this god you see is a mighty god and when god is ready to stand up and deliver a man for his namesake it's a fearful thing to see the warrior dimension of god he is not only a lamb there is a lion when god decides he says let god arise let god arise the only way you make him arise is to make your enemies his enemies for as long as they are your enemies they will not arise they, he will only arise when they become his enemies and the only way to make your enemies his enemies is to become his friend then you become an ally let god arise and let his enemies he will not arise for your enemies when your enemies become his enemies when they threaten something your life is supposed to do that produces his glory now they become his enemies when they threaten your passion for god your passion for kingdom come they become his enemies and the bible says god is able to arise he sent his angel and the angel came and opened that prison door 
watch this now he came out of a place of bondage but he had not entered rest when he came to the place where he would find rest they were praying and they were excited but there was no discernment he knocked and a young lady came and opened the door Rhoda when she saw him in excitement she closed the door look how powerful the early church were do you know what they said they said it's his angel that means it was a it was a very it was a usual thing for them to have angelic encounters no if he's an angel just leave him he's doing his work let's keep praying if an angel knock your door will you not open and say you are welcome what did god say no it's his angel don't let it distract you angels are just doing their things let's keep praying and then the bible says peter kept knocking kept knocking kept knocking kept knocking until they finally opened and when he entered he found his rest and they were astonished listen to me there is a dimension of the priesthood ministry of believers that is responsible for the opening of doors and gates many believers are not able to triumph over obstacles and swing wide even ancient gates because even though we pray we have not sustained the power to travel and remain until victory is wrought in the spirit there has been all manner of teachings from well-meaning people across the body that communicate an idea that when you stay persistent in the place of prayer over a matter that sometimes it may reflect unbelief i do not agree with that scripture tells us that jesus went to pray in gethsemane why because shortly he would be descending to hades the place of the dead and he prayed the bible says he prayed three times repeating the same words are we together now the challenge with believers is that we do not pray enough and stay true in the place of travail and prayer until victory is wrought in christ now let me teach you something i know that your your pastor has done an excellent job opening up to you the reality of scripture many believers are confused about the dynamics the administration of the kingdom and god's power maybe because of the way that the truth of scripture is taught um, across the body of christ this is by no means a way of creating any divide or any trouble but this is just because i'm teaching in a conference most believers confuse what we call the finished work of christ realities from god's standpoint versus their experiential manifestation if you not understand if you don't understand this you will live a defeated life forever listen carefully the finished work of christ refers to every dimension of victory that was wrought in christ on account of his death his burial his resurrection the substitutionary sacrifice of christ did not just administer eternal life to the saints no it brought in experience back that dominion and that victory that man gave to satan are we together now so it's a fact and it is truth that in christ every dimension of victory that the believer seeks as far as excelling in this realm is, con is concerned it is already a reality from the standpoint of god but what believers do not know is that the administration of that finished work has a dynamics attached to it this is what we teach there is a dynamics to the administration of it for instance the bible says from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain so what did jesus come to do because in god's mind that was already done but that reality then could not save man jesus had to come in the flesh to act it out for 33 and a half years what he was doing was not adding to what was in the mind of the father he was executing what was in the mind of the father that's why he was called the logos of god the thoughts of god in expression it was his death his burial his resurrection his ascension and his enthronement that brought about what we call today the victory of the believer now but as powerful as that is 
in God's mind, nobody on earth should go to hell again. Why? Because the sacrifice for our salvation is finished. Yet every day people fly and swim to hell. Is that true? They are going to hell. Does not make his power or his sacrifice less than the truth. But because they do not understand the system of administering that life to themselves. The system of administering that life is found in Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10. If you ever become a recipient of that life, you must follow that code of administration. The word is near thee, even in your mouth and in your heart. The word of faith that we preach. 9. It says, if you will confess. This is how the administration of the life of God is imparted in the believer you have to confess with your mouth the lord jesus then believe with your heart that god raised him from the dead he says thou shalt be saved the law is in verse 10 with the heart man believes unto righteousness and then with the mouth confession is made unto salvation the word soteria not just salvation like new birth any kind of salvation whatsoever are we together so even though the finished work of christ is a reality if you do not find yourself subscribing to this administrative system you will go to hell in god's mind no believer should be sick because the same cross that paid for sin paid for sickness but there are still people sick today and your being sick does not mean god lied it only means you are a student in the school of the spirit evolving into that state where the reality of that that word will be true in your life are we together why am i saying this there are many believers who just believe that because they have found what christ has done automatically it is administered into their lives this is a very subtle but dangerous dimension of deception so we have people who never are able to experience the fullness of the life and the power of god there are many believers who are poor, who are broke, who are struggling, and yet they study all the time that the blessings of Abraham belong to them. The Bible says, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29, it says, And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So there is no confusion that we are partakers of the blessing that is upon Abraham and his seed, that seed being Christ. But just because that is a reality, it does not mean that you walk in the fullness of it automatically no jesus said if it is true that you are the children of abraham you will do the works of abraham the works of abraham refer to the participatory conditions that he met for that blessing to be actualized in his life so we there are so many things we continue to claim we continue to claim we continue to claim and yet our lives remain we remain victims of situations and circumstances oh i know in the name of jesus i am all right and yet things are clearly showing you are not all right i am favored and there's no iota of favor for decades i'm moving forward and all we see is retrogression let god be true and all men liars so when we teach the principles of the kingdom we teach them because those realities are already finished access does not mean experience listen carefully there is a difference between access and experience what jesus did on the cross gives us access our faith the participatory action that we take makes it our experience forever O oh lord thy word is settled not in your life in heaven it takes faith and the operation of the principles of the kingdom to make it settled in your life if you are learning something this morning say amen, amen. so we must open up our hearts on the strength of everything that christ has done and the realities that have been purchased the possibilities that the believer the believer can step into now on account of christ's finished work that is what we call grace grace is not just unmerited access uh -uh. grace refers to the storehouse the compendium of everything that makes god god
power is grace mercy is grace anointing is grace wisdom is grace grace refers to that central storehouse that contains every possibility that is in god given to the believer only through the office and the person of the christ grace gives you access but faith and faith here does not just mean confession the entire participatory process of a believer that shows your obedience to the principles connected to that promise so for every dimension of god's grace listen carefully there is a mystery connected to it if it is speed if it is restoration if it is favor are we together now if it is the anointing if it is influence all of these possibilities are true in christ but for every one of these possibilities there are mysteries and keys that connect them merely claiming the results without understanding the principles that lead to that outcome will be self-deception and this is sadly the state of many believers today just because you saw the promised land does not mean you are in it. You can see it and yet never step into it. Are we together? In John chapter 3, when you read John chapter 3 from verse 3 now, it was a conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus. He came to him by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man can do these things except God be with him. Verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, verily verily i say unto you except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god and nicodemus answered and said how can a man be born when he is old can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born verse 5 jesus now uses another expression verily verily i say unto you except a man be born of water aha uh -huh, and the spirit he cannot enter there is seeing the kingdom and there is entering the kingdom you can see the kingdom and yet never enter into that experience john 10 10 says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy jesus said but i am come verse 10 that ye may have life and that you may have that life more abundantly ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 inasmuch as apostle john had told us that we are recipients of eternal life is that true he told us that we have the life of god but here paul is mentoring the church in ephesus and he's teaching them something about the administration of the life of god he says having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart they are not able to step into the full potential of this life that they claim to have because of ignorance and blindness is god speaking to us so believers hear me it takes knowledge it takes understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom to actualize every reality that is meant for the believer in christ merely believing that just because he did it it is over is deception i repeat merely believing that just because it is finished in christ you do not have any participatory role is deception hallelujah amen so here we are talking about the mystery that opens gates and we see from acts chapter 12 that the church prayed they began to pray and they prayed without season listen carefully they prayed without season first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17 please first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17 first thessalonians 5 and verse 17 read with me god's people one to read pray without season one more time one more time pray without season does not mean pray from morning till night you will be an irresponsible believer if you do that it means be consistent in your prayer life be consistent the idea is that of consistency 
be consistent in your prayer life james chapter 5 and verse 13 apostle james again was teaching us buttressing on the ministry the priesthood ministry of prayer he said every time a believer finds out that there is anything that represents an affliction in your life your first part of call as a believer is let him pray you sense that doors are closed towards you you sense that gates are closed you know that prophecy does not seem to find the kind of expression in your life he says to pray submit yourself to that prayer ministry and stay there until those gates are open prayer is powerful it is god's recommended key that opens gates from acts chapter 12 we see that two strategic gates were opened and all of them were opened by consistency 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 the prayer of the saints made the gates of the prison to be open the persistent knocking of peter made the other gates that led to his rest to be opened matthew 7 7 ask and it shall be given you it's a law these are spiritual laws that provided you ask there is a guarantee that it will be given to you next instruction seek and it leaves you with an assurance that you shall find and then number three it says knock and it shall be opened unto you next verse for everyone everybody say everyone this is not an assurance just to men of god this is not just to those in ministry there are blessings that are for everyone for everyone that asketh will receive everyone that seeketh and everyone that knocks it shall be opened for as long as you knock it shall be opened For as long as you knock, it shall be opened. For as long as you knock, it shall be opened. Can I tell you this? There are victories in the life of every believer you see. There are gates that have been opened. Gates of ministry. Gates of blessings. Gates of oppression. There are people who were born and based on their background, there is no advantage whatsoever. All of them seem to have been caged in, in gates and prisons of witchcraft, mediocrity, and it looked like no one would lift up his head. But in that family, you will usually find one person who will be tired one day and say, this pattern and this trend must end. And they may not have anyone understanding them and backing them, but they stay with power and with fire. Day one. One day turns to one week. One week turns to one month. Consistently every day. Let me tell you this. There is a law in the realm of the spirit that consistency attracts the spirit dimension of the activity you are doing. Let me explain to you what I mean. I can tell lies today, God forbid. And it may be a product of my own will. It's not the devil. It's just you as a human being using your own will to lie. You are not under the influence of a spirit. You are a free moral agent. I can lie tomorrow again. Steal my will. I can lie next week again. Steal my will. But let me tell you what is happening in the realm of the spirit. The spirit that controls lying is being attracted by my consistency. The moment I'm doing it consistently, wherever that spirit is, there is something about my consistency that is drawing it to my place. One day, as I lie, I will give that spirit access to enter my life and my destiny. From that day, it will not be by my energy again to lie. Are you getting me? so i can be studying the bible consistently and just i'm tired i'm doing it i'm not gaining anything but i continue to be consistent while i'm consistent in the name of the lord the dimension of the holy spirit that operates as the spirit of revelation is being attracted by my consistency who is this that is always opening scripture 
one day i will open that bible and from that day it will not just be you reading again this is how it is with the spirit of prayer and supplication you can go to prayer and after five minutes you think you've done one hour and you check your watch you say no this watch is not working all this time five minutes no way hmm. has that happened to you i like this church you don't tell lies you prayed sang danced and everything was under five minutes and you vowed that day that you do three hours ah! now you are calculating and wondering what in the world and then you pray again and then you pray again and then you pray again and you just think you are praying in the flesh until one day you stand there to pray and it becomes a vigil only you that day is not you again that is the kind of grace that comes upon you that even while you are sleeping as you turn to the left you are sleeping you are not even aware let me tell you this everywhere you see ease there is a spirit supplying it when you see ease it is because that person through the frequency the the law of consistency has attracted a spirit dimension if a young man keeps stealing and is under the influence of a spirit let me tell you how much he will steal he will steal in a way that even if you hide the money under a carpet he will stand there and just go and raise the carpet he does not even know what is leading him have you seen people like that you will hide anything anywhere he just looks as if he's joking because he's under the influence of a spirit he does not know it's the same way you can be under the spirit of the grace for favor and you just stand and say no i need to go to this person's house just when you get there that's when your destiny helper is arriving and people ask you how come you get things so accurately it is because you are under the influence of a spirit so let me teach you something about prayer when you hear that the early church prayed without ceasing no human being sustains the power in the flesh to be consistent in prayer prayer is a is labor except you've not really prayed hallelujah but when that spirit of prayer and supplication comes upon you you pay attention and begin to pray do you know the mistake of jacob in genesis 28 he saw angels ascending and descending but they were never coming to him they were going to those who were calling for their ministry that was why he was angry how could that be so close to an encounter and then the angels were sent the bible never said they brought any message to him even though he had the voice of god but he did not have any he did not benefit anything and he said the lord was in this place and i knew not the next time he did not let god go 32 genesis i made that mistake once i will not make it again leave me for the day break he said i will not let you go unless you bless me listen to me believers we do not know the power that has been given to us in prayer and the the omnipotence of prayer when it is accurately administered you can swing gates open the average believer thinks he's so weak when you don't have physical cash or when you don't have a political title you see that now our sociological context has indoctrinated us into believing we are just masses we are just a flock you read your bible and see what ordinary men did through prayer elijah the bible says was a man of like passion he was hungry he went to toilet just like any other person but the bible says that he prayed earnestly earnestly the key word there earnestly that there be no rain notice in all this prayer the prayer points were consistent not this today and that tomorrow peter should be delivered that was a prayer point they stayed there until he was delivered when peter was knocking he didn't follow the window and knock he stood at that one door and knocked till that very door opened the challenge with many believers
is that we do not have the staying power the ability to stay through and pray until you see the answer to your prayer after three days we route through another thing again for everyone that knocketh, that door that gate shall be opened it was the consistency of the believers around jericho why would god tell them to move once every day look how frustrating that is i'm walking around jericho no noise nothing i hope you know that jericho was a city jericho was like abuja so when he said they went round, don't think it was just one small shop that they just went round in two minutes when you go around jericho even you you ask god am i going to do this for six days do you not see that spiritual things require consistency elijah washed seven times god you are powerful what is in the number if he had washed six times he would have left leprous six and then took the water the seventh time and just rubbed on his head he was supposed to go in seven times and even at the sixth time there was no sign of healing it was until he completed that seven time now watch this imagine that god gives you an instruction to go around abuja once every day from now till next week i know when we read it we think it's just a city with a fence that they just went round and no noise so the six local governments in this city down from Guagualada, what's the other part after Guagualada? Abaji. Going around there, down near Karu. You turn, and by evening you are around angry and exhausted. And God says, Rest quickly in the morning, you are starting again. But while that was happening, in, they did not know what was happening in the eyes. Siba, the way spiritual things work five minutes to their manifestation it will still look like defeat whereas you have finished you have they scattered jericho from the realm of the spirit the shout was just a system to sink that building down consistency so every day while you are praying you hold hands with your wife it's like a register you are signing next week many of us today love god because of our mother's prayers and fasting for 20 years they did the same thing some of them even had the same position where they knelt and they prayed they prayed that god will find you and one day in your rebellion you just loitered around the crusade and stood there just to check for five minutes looking for your friend and fire from heaven fell upon you there because everyone that asketh receiveth can i tell you this satan is the master of the flesh realm the sense realm and so he can make you believe that the investments of prayer you are making is not bringing any result the bible says the word is quick and powerful i've been praying over this issue for one month just when you are two days left for victory you retreat you know your answer is almost there when the frustration becomes highest it's an agitation from hell it's one of the ways you know seasons are about to open there is a heightened level of frustration everybody is annoying you your husband annoying you your wife annoying you everything annoying you when that happens keep at it it's a sign to frustrate your consistency believe me i know what i'm saying Father, build your church. Bring revival upon this city. Church history is full of men and women who seem powerless, but they prayed. Men like John Knox, who used prayer to overturn Scotland. Most of the evangelists who had gone to be with the Lord now, before they would go for a crusade in any city, there would be at least three months of fire from intercessors they had a band of intercessors who would pray they would usually carry the map of the city where they are going to and drop it on their prayer altar 
and they are praying everywhere the powers that hold the destinies of people the powers from the second heavens when they finish that their equipments can now go before them and it's not the day they stand on that crusade ground that the sick are healed they finished it since they only came to manifest war betides a man who uses the stage for rehaza the stage is not the place for rehaza whenever god wants to build you he will take you behind the stage and that's where you make the prayer investments you don't stand on stage and that's when you are trying to learn about anointing and power you are joking go and do your homework when you come out then you are ready for action there are gates hear me that refuse to open for your father he knocked it all through his lifetime it did not open refuse to open for your mother and they all step back now god is raising you let me tell you what to do i know what you do do what they did not do they prayed only for two weeks and gave thanks and went back but for you hold on to the horns of that gate and say i have come with grace from heaven what is this pattern of barrenness in this family that will not lead ah, what is this marriages don't seem to work everybody returns back to their father's house minus me and not only me i'm not just here to open this gate i'm here to scatter it so that anybody see if it opens for you they can close it again but when you scatter the gates everybody behind you can pass can i tell you this it was bishop david Oedeku who said no matter how mad a man is he will not enter fire by mistake he can be mad enough to misbehave but set fire and there will be a level of decorum and behavior he makes his angels wings and his ministers flames one thing i know about fire is that there is no metal it cannot melt no if fire refines gold what else exact fire upon that gate exact fire upon that altar and watch what i'm telling you believers don't pray we lament we close the door and roam around but we do not engage with the spirit you are not praying blandly there are forces that stop helpers from coming to your life there are forces just when they're about to sign something that becomes an open door these forces use men and systems and structures lift up your head oh gate is not just a pronouncement there is an activity that you must engage in prayers was made by the church for peter prayers was made by the church over the areas of your life there are areas that if you sit down and allow the devil to keep oppressing you let me tell you this satan is a determined person he would destroy anything you allow him to destroy when it was time for the nation of israel to leave they said we will allow you go but keep your wives behind and keep your children moses said i didn't hear you well everybody everybody and everything i'm not going to live with my health and leave my finances behind everything i'm not going to live with my character and leave my influence behind everything must move forward hear me brothers and sisters by the grace of god and by the privilege of god's mercy i am a testament of what prayer can do no until you get you take your prayer life seriously you will teach cheap victories in the spirit you will shift systems and structures and align men and things to line up purposes of god awake thou that sleepest this spiritual slumber and laziness is why gates continue to look as though they are strong
this morning for a few minutes i want us together as a coordinated army to scatter some gates in this place mm. gates of delay gates of shame and influence look at me please listen just help those under the anointing listen there are people who are victims of these prisons that peter was in it is the women that feed the men where you come from no matter how responsible they are they go to america for 10 years and return back like they've never left their village What of those who rise just when they get to the place where they should sit down? They come down in shame. They never come down normally. Don't say it does not matter. No. The one person that becomes the breadwinner. I remember one time something happened to a dear woman, her only son responsible gentleman he finished with first class he was returning back home and he had a ghastly motor accident died in that instance don't tell me that is the will of god i hope you know these gates we talk about they are mobile they are not just in one place they look for wherever you are and come and stand in front of you I want to help you where are you from you look like you're my relative yes sir meet me at the office tomorrow and those kids come and stand by the next day you go to the office and say i can't remember where did i meet you and you are wondering what is going on some of you have been in this city for more than one decade and yet the gates in the city have refused to open for you anything you do fails you do business it fails you have been trying to build you are still at the foundation level when you were trying to build the entire land around you was empty till today you have not lifted it to lintel level help them please just help those under the anointing listen i know this by the spirit please give me volume elijah we are going to pray this is a conference we will take out time the bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder while you are praying don't pray for yourself alone think of your children born or unborn lord let me pass through this once and for all so that everybody behind will not have to go through that shame in one minute i'd like you to open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit please pray pray walk around pray be serious pray Selekete pakata barakatos, entelentes kabaratos koto prekete katos yata. Shana kete benda kete barakatos, ekete pakata kato pakato koto prekete kata. Selemente pakato brando kosko barikata. Kabarente kepeka tosko to praga de balada ba. E praga te kete peka te praga tosko te peka te balada ba. Se kete keli baba baraza. Li kapa ta kapa sa se kete tosko to praga to to praga de balada ba. Li kapa te baba le kese kete keli papa radas. Sa sa ta ka la pa so to le kesi da. E pa te te to to le baba baraza. Shala da da bala da bala da bala. Shala da da bala da bala. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready to pray? Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I decree and declare. I decree and declare. By the blood of the eternal covenant. By the blood of the eternal covenant. Every gate. Every gate. Standing my way. Standing my way. Standing in front of my path. Standing in front of I my path. I clear you by the blood of the I Lamb. Clear you by Lift the blood your voice and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. Every gate. We clear you. We clear you. We clear you. Every gate. Gates of oppression. Gates of oppression. We clear you out of the way. We clear you out of the way. In the name of 
Hallelujah. Amen. Please, if you can, pair yourselves into two. You're married, find your wife or find your husband or find anybody close to you. You are going to pray. Every gate standing in front of our home, it doesn't matter how long, by the blood of the co eternal covenant, we command those gates be destroyed. Lift your voice and pray. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus. Every gate, are you praying? Every gate. Pray for the person in the name of jesus amen first thessalonians 2 18 we are still praying my god there's fire in this place first thessalonians 2 18 18 please read with me everyone one two read wherefore we would have come to you even i paul once and again but satan hindered us your favor is speaking since january i've been looking for you but there has been a hindrance your lifting is speaking i desire to come to you are you ready to pray Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare. I decree and declare. Every demonic hindrance. Every demonic hindrance. Stopping prophecy. Stopping prophecy. Stopping my blessings. Stopping my blessings. From reaching me. From reaching me. This day, this day, I declare, I declare those powers are destroyed. Those powers Lift your voice and begin to pray. I declare every gate, every hindrance. Jesus lift your hands we are still praying just lift your hands 
I'm seeing chains on the feet of like four or five people. I'm stretching my hands now. These chains, these things have to do with ancestry. They have tied some of you so that you will not move forward. Right now, fire, parados, fire, fire from heaven. Fire. I don't know who that person is, but in the name of Jesus, anyone here who is a victim, help them. Makatos ketedea, maretos kida. Chains be broken. Chains be broken. Chains be broken. Chains be broken. Bring them out. We're praying. Shabakata bakata. Every chain, chains of ancestry, witchcraft, orchestrations of darkness, ill speakings of men, be broken. Shalika parakatosia. Embreketes katebekata. Scopa the Lord is telling me to release people here who have been victims of delay. Sir. Yes, sir. Everybody moves except you. I'm praying now. Please help those people because when I pray, some of you are standing in for your families. Enough is enough. Here at this conference, it's time for gates to be open. I declare at the count of three, Lord, anyone here at World Alive who is a victim of any kind of delay at the count of three i want all of you to shout the name jesus are you ready one two three jesus. delay be broken break now break now break now break now, break now. Break now. Shanakata, gates of delay, yes, gates yes, of delay, gates yes, of delay, be broken, be broken. Sabada, bada, 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 Hallelujah. Was he praying? Look at me. The Lord wants to destroy patterns. It happened to your father. Now it's happening to you. It happened to your mother. Now it's happening to you. By the blood of the eternal covenant, we have an advantage. Are you ready to pray? Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every pattern. Every pattern. Following me. Following me. I declare. I declare. By the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. You are broken now. You are broken. Lift your voice and pray. You are broken. You are broken. Lift your voice and pray. Shakale baba do eseni. Ikala baba do le baba seke seke ne. Ebre chote do sule baba da. Shale baba baba le baba da. Ikala baba do es. 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 Shans of failure. Shans of property. Shans of death. Shall <laughs> I 
In the name of Jesus. Amen. Isaiah 60 verse 11. Isaiah 60. Read with me everybody by faith. Let this be a prophetic word for you. Are you ready? One to read. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day or, or night that men may bring unto me the forces of the, the Gentiles. Gentiles. And that their kings may be blessed. Listen, one more time you are going to read it. But personalize it as a prophetic yes, word. Yes, sir. Are you ready now? Yes, sir. One to read. Therefore, my gates shall be, shall be open continually. They shall, shall not be shut day or night. That men may bring unto me the forces of the Gentiles. And that their kings may be brought to me. Hallelujah. Pastor, sir, please, if you would allow me. I want a few ministers prophetically. Please station them just as a point of contact. If you can stand just at the front of the gates of your church here, just prophetically while we pray. Maybe some of the people holding the mic, Shut just up, one, just prophetically, just stand at that place. Thank you. We are praying. We want to speak over this church that everyone connected to the grace upon this man, yes, sir. this must be your season Allah. for these gates to be open. Amen. Please position yourself there. We are going to pray. Yes, sir. Are you ready now? Yes, sir. Now everyone, we are going to pray that every gate that has refused to open yes, sir. so that helpers will come into your life every gate that has refused to open so that your influence will manifest we are declaring over your life and over what are life are you ready now say in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we decree and declare we decree and declare as members of this commission of this commission we stand and we declare, and we declare, word alive, word alive. Your gates, your gates are open, are open continually, continually, bringing influence, bringing, bringing wealth, bringing wealth, bringing increase. Bring Lift increase. your voice and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. Father, word alive, your gates are open continually. The gates of word alive are open continually. Bringing men, bringing influence, bringing resources, bringing. There is a grace for speed. There is a grace for speed. You write this down. You will marvel and wonder and see the way God will begin to honor men to testify in this assembly. Hallelujah. That doors just begin to open. But I want to release that grace as we pray. Please don't be distracted. Father, I stretch my hands. Standing in faith with your choice servant, we declare in the name of Jesus Christ that anyone here who must drink of this oil and this grace at the count of three right now, let speed, speed, speed upon your life. One, yes. two, three. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. Help them, please. Take that grace. Speed. 
Speed of accomplishment. Take that grace. Speed in business. Speed in ministry. Speed. 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 I prophesy. I declare. Help them. Help them. Please help them. Speed. Whether you are an usher or not, God help them. I declare speed. What a life. Speed. 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 In the name of Jesus. Speed. Speed in career. Speed in your spiritual advancement. Ten years in one year. 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 Please look up. We're almost rounding up. Now, look up, please. The Bible says Peter came out of the gates, the prison that made for captivity. But when he now came to the place of rest, he knocked and they refused to open. Are you ready to pray? There are times that you may not have the power to open the gate. You only have the power to knock. It will take somebody already inside yes, to open for you. Yes, Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yes, sir. Listen. Listen. Joseph had the ability to interpret dreams, but he did not have the ability to bring himself out to stand before the king. He had to depend on someone who was already in the palace. Are you ready to call your destiny helpers? Now watch this. I don't know how you are going to do it, but you are going to speak to your north, wherever north is. Turn to the south, turn to the east, turn to the west of Abuja and any territory. I'd like you to prophesy that anyone ordained by God in this season to hold your hand, yes, wherever they are, yes, compel their ministry. Yes, Lift your voice and begin to pray. Stretch your hands, prophesy to the north. Stretch your hands, prophesy to the south. Stretch your hands, prophesy to the east. Stretch your hands, prophesy to the west. Help us. Locate me. My destiny help us. Locate me. My destiny help us. Locate me. Shabado. Lagada. Ruka Satan. La catone de Baba Pondo Kosuria Valeta. Ataka Paya Basha. My destiny help us locate me. Locate me. Locate me. Locate me. Locate me from every direction. In the name of Jesus. Mande Kesunda Bayo. Eshalada. 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 In the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, your lifting has come oh, 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 oh your lifting has come oh, oh, oh your rising has come oh, 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 oh. we're wrapping up Please look up. I want to teach you something. Look at me, everybody. 
a time came in my life when I wanted to end seasons I took up time I prayed with all my heart listen carefully and the Lord led me to a scripture that I want to lead you to now Acts chapter 10 and verse 4 let's start from verse 1 Acts chapter 10 from verse 1 there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius a centurion of the band called the Italian band a devout man the Bible says and one that feared God with all his house which gave much arms to the people and prayed to God always notice two things his giving and his prayer he saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming to him and saying unto him Cornelius verse 4 when and when he looked on him he was afraid and said what is it Lord and he said unto him thy prayers and thy arms have come up as a memorial listen I can tell you by scripture and by experience that when prayer goes hand in hand with sacrifice they are weapons of mass destruction in the camp of the enemy now listen to me this is no manipulation at all your pastor is a man of integrity but i love you too much to not tell you the whole truth there are dimensions of breakthrough there are gates there are doors that it is not only your prayer alone your prayer goes along with a level and a measure of sacrifice many years ago the lord gave me an instruction that he was going to lead me to god's servant bishop david oedipo and it was a sacrifice i had been praying god had helped me but i knew that it was time to break some territorial doors and gates listen carefully and on that day the lord that the lord told me this is now the day i got up took my sacrifice on my way down to canaan land by the privilege of god's grace i was able to go it was there are sacrifices that when they leave you you too you know this is isaac not ishmael but you must love the seasons before you more than where you are and I remember when I came out to enter the car, so I would go and rest. The Lord told me to come out of that vehicle. And he said I should place my hand on the ground, on Canaan land, on the ground there. I placed my hand on that ground and the Lord spoke to me. He said from today you have entered the overflow anointing. I was praying and trusting God for increase. And favor upon my life you've heard my stories and I remember it was two women they are not the only ones that God used to bless me but it was it was not something well at that time maybe and simply because I helped them to pay for sugar they wanted to buy sugar cane I wanted to buy it too and I said mama no you are my mother's so let me honor you and I paid for them and they kept blessing me all women and one of them looked at me and said my son forever walk upon gold listen my dear people seeds and sacrifices can bury unpleasant seasons in your life and introduce other prophetic seasons now i know the issue of sacrifice has been abused there are imbalances here in the body of christ people have taken advantage of people but anybody who truly loves you and is teaching you the warfare dimension of victory if it is gates you are bringing down it is not only your mouth that will pray your giving your giving this is a morning session we're wrapping up you have prayed most of you here god has brought victories for you i want to challenge you you know me i'm not i'm not the kind of person who will go and be raising seeds and this but this one i know including myself listen let me challenge you i want to challenge everyone you are going to pray and agree with god that lord i'm coming with a sacrifice not a seed 
a sacrifice and don't if you just come and drop money what you did was donation you just wasted your money but you must tie any unfavorable season to it do you know why it's dangerous to steal money in church because that thing you are seeing people wrap seasons and curses on it they are dropping that seed to kill that season when you carry it you don't allow the season die you carry that that's what happened to Gehazi it's in your Bible just because the leprosy left Naaman did not mean that it had gone out of the earth he was waiting for somebody who would receive it I have ended seasons in my life and I've introduced certain seasons of favor if it is gates and the glory of God that you want to be released from your life maybe some of you are here and you have seeds now of sacrifice I will start I'm the, I'm the first who will start some of you are following online and you are saying apostle I am tired these obstacles and these gates that stand if you don't believe what I'm saying no problem just follow the other part of what I'm saying but I'm telling you if it is levels of increase that you want to step into I stand and I stake I, I, I lift the word of God if you honor this word sincerely you will marvel and wonder at what happens to you this is true are we together I'm going to speak over your life but we are going to give you don't have your seat here you need to discuss maybe with your wife or your husband go ahead you can do that during this maybe the last session tomorrow there are offering baskets here let me request please those of you following online or some of you are here there is a church account be careful and beware of scammers there is one central account because there are evil men who take advantage of prophetic moments like this and whilst we are serious about lifting the destinies of people you will find all these funny people doing all kinds of things online let me challenge you you have a seed a sacrifice you are saying lord i want to end seasons in my life i'm going to pray for you i'm not going to mention any amount this is between you and god and maybe your spouse or whatever it is if it's a vow or a pledge if you will not redeem it don't write anything don't say i'm coming to give god 10 naira and just be emotional and don't do what you are doing just emotionally no but i stand by the god of heaven and i tell you sincerely if you dare to honor the lord with your sacrifice i'm going to speak over your life some of you it will it will not be more than one week before you see the strange things that god does in your life are you ready so maybe in our, how do we do it now i'll give you two minutes two minutes if you have a seed here and you are saying lord i am ending these seasons in my life there can we use this this offering baskets okay there are two offering baskets here you can leave your seat hold on please and okay there are other people holding seats here you come and drop them and if you are using the account use the account if it's a pledge between you and god whatever it is please do not do this emotionally we are people who fear god one day we'll stand before god and we'll be judged are we together but i want you to release your faith and i want to pray with you in the next two minutes if you are coming out come out now god bless you oh Your lifting has come. Oh, 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 oh. Your lifting has come. Oh, 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 oh. Your lifting has come. hallelujah now those of you who are not able to come out there's no reason feeling bad we're standing we're just giving people an opportunity I want to pray for you father everyone here in front I believe they have come if there's no space you can just stand at the aisles 
There are so many people here. Lord, some of these people are standing here representing their families, their ministries, their businesses. Some have cried. Some are currently in debt. Some are standing here with all kinds of issues, maybe legal issues. Lord, you are the God of all flesh. And the world is watching us walk your principles. We pray that you will honor your word. Right now, I stand in faith with the angel over this house and his precious wife. Based on the integrity of scripture, I stretch my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, by your prayer and your sacrifice, I shift you by prophecy. Step into new seasons. New seasons of breakthrough. Hey, new seasons of favor I prophesy to you everything that has left you that should not have left I stand by prophecy and I call it back to your life I call it back to your life I call it back to your life in the name of Jesus Christ and hear me ah, there's such a strong anointing here everyone here who is using this seed to break cycles that you saw in your family patterns that you saw in the life of those who have gone ahead of you i stand by faith and in the in the name of jesus those cycles are broken now those cycles are broken now. Those cycles are broken now. Cycles of retrogression. Cycles of poverty and hardship. Cycles of servitude. In the name of Jesus be broken now. And every gate that stands before you and prophecy. Stands before you and destiny. Right now we command may those gates swing. May they open teeter and heater. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, honor the seeds and the sacrifices of your people. May it rise as a supernatural incense. Satan, by this sacrifice we put a sanction. And we decree and declare that you have no legal access to the lives the finances the destinies of these ones in the name of jesus christ be blessed in jesus name i pray amen drop your seed with thanksgiving quickly and return back you can drop it in the offering basket the altar anywhere just make contact and please return back to your seat as we prepare to round up two more prayer points and we're done please go back we're still praying again the account details are on the screen for those I don't know if there is a domiciliary account for uh, international audience if there is for those okay beautiful there's a USD account you can use that should be projected on the social media platforms Please very quickly two more prayer points and we're done hallelujah praise the name of the lord are you tired <laughs> please rise up on your feet we'll soon wrap up oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you oh god 
scripture but pay attention when Joshua received his commissioning from God he told him he was going to take Jericho but before then two things happened and I want to introduce them quickly and we'll pray the first thing that happened was he needed a strategy for the defeat of Jericho the defeat of Jericho he would not use his own formula to bring down the gate and even the walls of Jericho. And so the first assignment God gave him was circumcise yourselves. Look up please everybody. Listen carefully. He said some of you who came out, there was a generation of the men who came out that were not circumcised. You cannot attract the backing of heaven, he was telling Joshua. Therefore, get knives circumcise yourselves you want heaven to reveal the strategy to bring down the gates and the wall it is not without a circumcision and when he said that Joshua gathered the men and all of them as a people they circumcised themselves and whilst they circumcised themselves they stayed there until they were healed suddenly a being came and said Joshua now that you have fulfilled the law of circumcision you are ready to receive the strategy this will be the strategy go around jericho seven times once every day and on the seventh day you will go around with the ark in front of you and then you will raise a shout let me tell you this there is a reason why many people do not experience the backing of heaven to come and reveal prophetic strategies that make for destiny it is because many times that circumcision circumcision is a painful process whether for children or adults is that true yes sir the cutting away of the flesh seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses he says let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us it says looking up to jesus who is the author the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and even despised the shame you cannot do god and something else no you can't have one arrow in your house that was given to you from the village and add it and combine it with God. You cannot want the blessings of God and you are playing pranks in the office and so on. Don't feel offended. There has to be a determination for that circumcision. The cutting away of everything you know that sustains the ability to drive away the backing of heaven. If heaven does not back you, there cannot be the strategy men reign and they dominate in this kingdom on the strength of the strategies they receive from heaven whether for ministry whether for business including idol worshippers they go through the requisite levels of sacrifices and then spirits come and back them you're going to pray a prayer of genuine rededication and say father my life and all that my destiny is about is about Jesus Jesus only Jesus ever you remain my priority everything that is not you I cut it away from my life don't say I've been born again for 10 years that's not what I'm asking you are you ready now 
in one minute cry your heart and say father i cut away let there be that circumcision let there be that genuine circumcision please pray those following online pray that same prayer that circumcision by the spirit relationships one minute you are praying to the God of your salvation it is all about you and only about you Jesus highly exalted and there is nothing you can do oh Lord my eyes are on you be magnified oh allegiance to the with all my heart with all I am I will seek to honor his command I pledge allegiance I'd like you to pray and say father as proof that every closed gate has been opened over my life give me testimonies between today and tomorrow release your faith and pray lift your voice as proof that these gates have been opened and my glory is ready to be revealed it says thou O lord that a shield for me you are my glory even the lifter of my head Lord, give me a token. Give me a sign. In the name of Jesus. Give me a sign. In the name of Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. If one, if we can have amplified. Praise the Lord. Are we ready to read? One to read, please. Arise from the depression come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you do you believe this please turn this scripture in one minute into a prayer the glory of the lord is risen upon my life visible for all to see visible for all to see the glory of the lord risen upon me visible for all to see hallelujah in the name of jesus christ god bless you please be seated are we blessed it is important that the glory of god be revealed it is important that creation see the glory of god the bible says one generation will declare his glory to another is the word dogzazo the flaunting of a man's glory it was in the similitude of what ahasuerus did remember the story of ahasuerus and vashti the book of esther he called all the neighboring kings it was the custom of kings those days to show the reason why they seem to have that level of respite and respect and so they would take them and show them around the entire palace that was a man who was a captain and a king over 127 provinces he was a great man there was one reason why vashti was banished out of the palace because she refused to participate in the revelation of the king's glory when he sent for her as his bride 
to come and add up to the revelation of his glory she had her own agenda and for that error of refusing to partner in revealing the king's glory she was banished out of the palace never to return there what made esther elevated con continually until with that elevation she defeated her man and even led to the promotion of mordecai everything that happened in the book of esther if it was destructive it was an attempt to fight the glory of the king if it led to elevation it was a contribution to the revelation and the sustenance of the glory of the king mordecai was a man who saved the king when there was a plot to kill him mordecai revealed it and for that reason the king was saved esther when it was time for her to defeat this evil man called her man she said king i have come to you i want to put a celebration that's all i want to do she never said i wanted to destroy her man no i want to put a celebration to flaunt your glory let the nations know that you are a great king and the king said what a woman all right you go ahead and she put all that again and then when it happened the king was so happy he said do it again and the bible says when they came to a feast called the feast of wines when the king was excited with her commitment and her determination to reveal his glory she said oh king there is a treacherous man in your camp and on the strength of that as that excitement her man the balance of his judgment that started with the instruction to flaunt and glorify mordecai finished and they hung that man on the gallows that he built himself for another the revelation of the glory of god when your life becomes an instrument dedicated towards the revelation of the glory of god when you make up your mind that in and through your life men will see the glory of god you come to that place where paul says in galatians chapter 1 verse 24 i think and they glorified god in me and they glorified god in me john 15 and verse 8 please john 15 and verse 8 herein is my father glorified how is god glorified what a life that ye bear much fruit it's in the excellency of your results that god is glorified he's not just glorified just by mere confession creation is waiting to see the revelation of the excellence of the kingdom in and through our lives it says let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and they may glorify your father notice every time men see the all-surpassing excellence of the kingdom at work in the life of a believer they are compelled to bring glory to the name of the lord are we blessed yeah that means that if my life and your life is barren of a revelation of god's power god's grace god's excellence there is a dimension of the glory of god that we rob creation from experiencing you have to understand this it is the reason why or one of the reasons why your pastor would so labor to speak over your life to teach you the ways of god why because your life needs to be a reflection of the benevolence the love the grace that is upon this king that we serve there is a name god is called he's called the king of glory not only savior not only lord king of glory who is this king of glory he said the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle but he is king of glory praise the name of the lord and so there are two keys listen i made up my mind as a believer that my life will command such levels of results that will bring glory to the name of the lord i made a vow and a covenant with my life that i will not just be an explainer creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of god they are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of god 
the bible says behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us in that we are being called the sons of god he says now are we the sons of god and it does not yet appear what we shall be like who is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle amen who is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty he is mighty in battle amen for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever jesus came there was a feast in cana of galilee are we together and then the bible says that they were serving wine and wine finished imagine with me for instance that this were a feast and in the midst of guests and dignitaries very important personalities the wine finished so there was a serious confusion there was a a very a very serious situation that would bring shame and reproach within that feast and then mary led a few people to jesus and he told them fix uh, fill six pots with water and he said fetch it and take it to the rulers as they moved it turned to wine when they gave the rulers and they took it and said why would you do this to us everyone brings their best wine at the beginning of the feast and now you have waited until we have taken this old wine and then you brought this new then the bible says this beginning of miracles jesus did in the presence of his disciples he says and he manifested forth his glory he manifested forth his glory in your excelling is the revelation of the glory of god in your prosperity is the manifestation of the glory of god in your walking in divine health in your enjoying long life are we together now in the manifestation of dominion the dominion power of the spirit over situations and circumstances the beauty of god's anointing upon your life the multifaceted dimensions of his grace is walking through you when this becomes your reality you become like paul and barnabas who they call zeus and hermes they said you are no longer humans because this kind of result is as if you are not living within the same sociological context there are possibilities that we must capture into our lives creation is waiting to see whether god lied or not and our lives will become that canvas that will paint accurately the excellence of god or otherwise as for me i have made up my mind that in my lifetime you will be glorified in my life be glorified be glorified in this place be glorified be glorified you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor hallelujah and so there are two keys two keys from scripture that can allow a believer's life and a believer's experience to be a revelation of the glory of the lord key number one light isaiah chapter 60 where we started from we'll read the first three verses please isaiah 60 1 to 3 the bible says we can we can use kjv now thank you thank you very much arise shine it says for your light is come not your light is available it's always been there but the day it comes to you 
arise shine to the degree to which your light comes and the glory of the lord is risen upon you it says for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people is the hebrew expression to who bohu it talks of confusion and chaos and then the bible says but the lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon thee if this is for you say amen, amen. verse 3 is where i find it very interesting you will no longer look for them there will be such a compelling dimension of the light and the power of god through your life to the degree that gentiles shall come it's one thing to look for them but it's one thing to become the light and gentiles shall come to your light and even their arrogant kings to the brightness of your rising this is what happens when light is at work in your life light talks of spiritual illumination colossians chapter 1 and verse 9 paul was praying over the church in Colossae, and he began to cry unto god and to be des to desire that they be filled with number one the knowledge of his will number two all wisdom number three spiritual understanding just give us verse 9 colossians 1 and verse 9 light light in ephesians chapter 3 paul himself began to speak to us on the basis for such is such level of spiritual dexterity ephesians chapter 3 please let's start from verse 1 we'll read verse 3 then we'll jump to verse 9 and 10 for this cause i paul are we still together this morning the prisoner of the lord jesus christ verse 2 how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote afore in few words verse 3 now three verse three three verse three please how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote afore in few words please continue until i prompt you then we go to verse nine he says whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ verse five which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men it says as it is now revealed unto his whole beginning of the world had been hid in god who created all things in christ to the intent this is why this mystery was given to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places by be known by the church the manifold wisdom of god the manifold wisdom of god are we still together yes the bible says that there have been things that are hidden for our glory and they are being revealed through these mysteries to the intent that we become a glorified body we are able to reveal the excellence you know what it means to excel i hope you know god excels he says oh lord our god how excellent his name is not just great the name excels to excel means to surpass ordinary standards are we together oh lord our god how excellent he says is your name the first key is light you are only able to reveal the glory of god in and through your life your business your family to the degree to which you contend for definite levels of spiritual illumination let me tell you this there are a class of demons that are called rulers of darkness their dominion starts everywhere there is the absence of light 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 believers must contend for light what is light knowledge the body of spiritual truth allocated for the victory of the saints is called light we must obtain grace from god to contend for light i love the name of your church word alive not just word around word that has been quickened in your spirit are we together listen you must have such passion for spiritual knowledge he says i commend you to god and to the word of his grace listen carefully 
which is build you up but to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified the word of god is able to build it is able to give we discussed yesterday ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 popular scripture it says having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance ignorance is deadly ignorance is terrible we rise in this kingdom on the strength of the lights that we possess but the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light hallelujah praise the name of the lord it is important that we sustain the ability to contend for light you may have heard me say this that every level of result that we seek to produce in this kingdom there is a there is a dimension a body of revelation that governs them if it is speed you want in life there is light that governs speed if it is prosperity genuine wealth and prosperity you seek there is a dimension a body of light that controls it if it's health and wholeness there is light are we together now this is very powerful habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4 please give us amplified habakkuk chapter 3 let's start from verse 3 and then we'll go to 4 habakkuk chapter 3 it says god approaching from sinai he came to teman which represents edom and the holy one from mount paran it says his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise read verse 4 with me please one to read and his brightness was like the sunlight uh-huh raised the power of god hides in his light when you find his light you also find with it his power everybody say light it's important we must take away spiritual ignorance in our lives you will never be able to be a manifestation of the glory of god in and through your life in darkness and ignorance light i continue to study scripture and glean from the wisdom of those who have gone ahead of us as a search to find light high level spiritual illumination that is able to take every darkness around your life away listen to me if these doors were shut all of the lights beautiful lights within this auditorium were off if you own the light of your phone is light but not enough to turn the night here today can i tell you this there is a relationship between darkness and weeping there is a relationship between darkness and weeping there is a relationship between light and joy it says weeping endures for a night for as long as it is night in your life weeping does not come to an end you want weeping to come to an end you must obtain the light that can turn night to day how many of you have been to stadiums where there's a crusade sometimes it can be 2 a.m in the night and yet because of the level of light in that stadium you would think it's afternoon he made two great lights the first to rule the day the second to rule the night until those lights are at work in you you will never have dominion in the day and in the night number two very quickly for this service the second key that we need to activate and to reveal the glory of god in and through our lives is called faith faith john 11 verse 40 faith it takes faith to command results in this kingdom john 11 verse 40 john chapter 11 and verse 40 jesus said unto her did i not tell you and promise you that if you would believe and rely on me you would see the glory of god there is a relationship between faith and the glory of God. If you will believe, then you will see the glory of God. If you will believe, then you will see the glory of God. If you will believe, then you will see the glory of God. In Mark, Mark 11 now, I think, verse 20. Let's start from 22. I hope I'm right on that. Yes. Mark 11 jesus is teaching on faith and jesus answering said unto them have faith in god 
fathers like papa he hagen would teach us that the accurate rendition is have the faith of god verse 23 for verily i say unto you whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart pay attention and shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass then he shall have whatsoever he says the law is in verse 24 therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that ye receive them and you shall have them you only have what you have received if you have not received it you can never have it there is a difference between receiving and having hallelujah so faith what is faith faith I define it as the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction on who God is and the integrity of his word. The name given to that action of obedience that you take as a response to your conviction is called faith. Faith is not merely believing. Believing is part of the faith equation, but not the only. There has to be an action of obedience. Hebrews 11 and verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. He calls it the evidence of things not seen. He says, For by this law, faith, the elders obtained a good report. Hallelujah. Action of obedience. Action in line with scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. The chapter from whence pastor read earlier on it says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord thy god to observe and to do all his commandments which i command you this day that the lord thy god will set you high above all the nations of the earth verse 2 says all these blessings how many all these blessings shall come upon you and shall overtake you if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the lord thy god faith you have to learn to trust god not just to merely confess your trust bishop oyedeko will say faith is not just saying what god said faith is doing what god has said there is a doing to faith there is a believing yes but there is a corresponding action please look at me every result that you and me would command in this kingdom as far as the manifestation and the revelation of the glory of god is concerned will require faith if it be thou bid me come and he said come it was up to him to take that risk and he took that step of faith and he began to walk on water and even when he was about to sink jesus took responsibility and lifted him up there are many prophetic instructions that have come from your pastor as far as the revelation of gl the glory of god is concerned if you are able to believe it and subscribe to the terms here is where many believers miss it in the faith equation we know what we want but we do not understand the spiritual conditions allotted for that result A man, for instance, who wants to increase financially and all he keeps doing is to confess and declare that in the name of Jesus, I am blessed. He's done it well, but not complete. You see, there are mysteries that connect to divine, to wealth and prosperity. For instance, there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and the Bible says he tends to poverty. Next, he said, a diligent hand shall be made fat. Is that true it says a lazy man will not sow because of the rain the weather and he will beg in harvest these are principles that control wealth and abundance for instance there are people who want to see the favor of god upon their life and the only thing they know about favor is that oh favor should come i'm just i declare favor no proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15 says good understanding procured favor it says but the way of the transgressor is hard there is a mother that gives birth to favor. The name of that mother is good understanding. There is also a mother that gives birth to hardship. The name of that mother is transgression. Are we together? When your hands are empty in the kingdom, there is an explanation for it. Lack and emptiness is proof that something is wrong. 
Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. So when your hands are empty while you go, it's proof that there's something missing in your life. There is a dimension of the glory of God that is yet to be revealed. Are we still together? I'm saying this because when we begin to pray, your assignment this morning is to search your life and find out what level of the glory of God or what dimension of glory is yet to be revealed in my life. Do not become like Naaman. Naaman in 2 Kings chapter 5, the Bible talks about a great man called Naaman. A valiant man in army. So when it had to do with the matters of war and security, he was a veteran. But the Bible says he was leprous. And one day a little slave girl began to suggest to him that look, it is possible for you to be complete. It is possible for you to be whole. It is possible for your life to reflect the entirety of God's glory. And he said, how shall that happen? Come, let me take you to a prophet. And cut the long story short, he washed seven times and the Bible says his skin became like that of a baby. Hallelujah. So I know that spiritually, you are doing well. Your prayer life is well. Your word life is well. But how about your finances? Are we together now? This service this morning is to challenge us to open up to receive all that makes for the full revelation of the glory of God in and through our lives. The wife of the sons of the prophet in 2 Kings chapter 4, she had sons. So she was not barren. Yet she was in debt. And her husband died. Only God knows what killed the man. Now the debtors had come to carry her sons. And she says, no, there is need for completion in my life. This morning, when we begin to pray, we'll be praying shortly. I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart when we begin to pray. And say, Lord, this area of my life you have brought, I have seen the revelation of your power. If it's prosperity, you have blessed me, you have shown me favor. But why are my children... Genesis 24 verse 1. Please read with me if you are a Christian. One, two, read. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. Uh -huh. And the Lord had blessed him in all things. How many things? All things. It is possible for a man to be blessed in all things. In all things. Don't listen to those sociological narratives that tells you once you are a human being, there must be something wrong. God can bless you in all things. In all things. So that your life becomes such a revelation of the glory of God. Your spiritual life is on fire. You love the Lord with all your heart. Your home is in peace reflecting the glory of the lord your finances and your business concerns keep excelling regardless of the pandemic this is what will compel men to say come on is it that you're not a human being too and you tell them no we are ordinary but there is a power there is a grace that backs us how else will men see that you are not alone they must see results that if i tell you i'm alone standing here and i try to lift this and you see this side lifted too it tells you there is somebody who is assisting me is that true we must challenge ourselves that our results are ordinary is the reason why people don't give glory to god nobody claps for me for walking it's human to walk you don't need to be born again to walk but when you begin to fly it is unusual is that true both a driver and a pilot are doing the same thing but at different levels is that true this is by no means to demean all of them have to do with handling and and trying to coordinate the movement of an object but the only reason why you seem to have more regard for a pilot than a driver is the dimension that they are holding one is holding it in the air one is holding it on land two people can be doing the same business is the dimension and the frequency of their operation that makes the difference one is doing it on land one is doing it in the air commanding results that humans should not produce are we together 
it is only marvelous in our eyes when it is the lord's doing if it's your if it's your doing it is natural in our eyes i came here this morning to challenge us to shake out of ordinary results and step into a level of results where your life becomes a scripture if somebody forgot his bible at home he will keep reading it when he sees you that means he left his bible at home he did finish his quiet time he was reading about the goodness of god and he had to rush for work and he's feeling bad that i left my bible at home as soon as he sees your life you're a continuation of his devotional he's studying you the excellency of the results that comes through your life that's what it means to be a living epistle believe what i'm telling you I don't glorify sickness and i don't mean to i don't mean to um to insult the efforts of government and all what we have done you know we've been plagued with the pandemic and people have fought and done all sorts of things but let me tell you the truth um i've made contact with more people probably in the last one year with all plagues and all diseases not just covid enough to kill anybody who is in his right mind and living in the flesh i'm talking of deadly communicable diseases where there are medical disclaimers to it this is by no means you see we function according to different levels of faith don't stand before pharaoh if you have not seen the burning bush <laughs> the condition to stand before pharaoh is that you have had an encounter with the burning bush i'm saying that there has to be something unusual about your life businessmen hear me for as long as you do business at the frequency of ordinary men nobody will find a reason to sit down and honor god through your life for as long as ministry happens at the frequency of men just like church history said it should happen There is a flight in the spirit i'm trusting that all of us will join this morning that in one week the results that your life will command can i tell you this do not let anybody deceive you that results don't matter the end of every argument is results and evidence a token of truthfulness results are proof that principles have been kept i hope you know that the glory of god comes as an attestation that his principles have been kept when his patterns are honored glory that's what happened in exodus chapter 40 remember the glory of the lord descended when moses built according to pattern so when the glory of god does not show up in your life it's a report card that you are violating divine patterns if the glory of god shows up in your finances shows up in your health shows up in your life it's an attestation it's a report card that there is something about the patterns of god that you are keeping and in the name of jesus i'm praying for someone that everyone who has laughed at you before this conference wondering if you are really born again it is only your tongues people used to know that you are a christian from today it will be tongues plus results dramatic results in the name of jesus christ let your light so shine before men that they may see let your light so shine before men unusual results extraordinary results unusual results look the testimony i i sat back while a brother was sharing a testimony of someone who connected online for the program i think whose mother was sick or so now imagine the revelation of jesus christ that that woman has is brought glory to the name of the lord but his results matter they are proof that you are doing something right the bible talks about the three hebrew boys it says these were men that the fire had no power over it is possible for fire to have no power over you are we together by the time you leave this service with a grace on your life and you get home and you see a text message waiting for you he says come and meet me tomorrow morning and you meet somebody and he says while we were sleeping the lord said this land you are seeing from here to here the lord said we should give it to you let me tell you this by the time you return back don't mind naysayers they'll keep saying what is there about land until poverty brings them to their knees 
most times people who don't have results are quick to criticize areas of their deficiencies it's only god that sees the heart oh men don't see the heart they see the outward they want to see the word becoming flesh the bible says the word became flesh and it dwelt among men and we beheld come see a man who has told me this was a woman who was a harlot everybody knew her now she sits with this prophet and in a little conversation he turned her whole world upside down you have five men that are not your husbands. The current one you are staying with is not your husband. Now she brought the issue of worship. I perceive then you are a prophet. After engaging him, she became an evangelist immediately. No Bible school. One encounter. And she said, before I go to Bible school, let me start preaching. That means she had the zeal to preach. She did not have evidence enough to convince her that Jesus was alive. There are many people who want to serve God. But the evidences that we bring are too small. The madman in gathering was an evangelist. He had not encountered the kind of power that turned that madness. Those demons kept prevailing. Imagine someone who would look at him and say, look at the God that claims that he is love. Look at his creation living under a stone. And I can imagine God saying, are there not people on earth who will change this narrative? Jesus walks and meets him and the man says, go, go, go. Have you come to destroy us before our time? And he says, leave him immediately. He went and brought ten cities. Can I tell you this? When the glory of God is revealed in your life, the glory of God is also a crusade sermon. Gospel into food that is upon his plate. When you meet a man who is frustrated, yes, you preach the gospel, but in addition, look what Jesus did. Every time he forgave sin, he did not leave the people in that condition. Your sins are forgiven, but to let you know that I am Abba, rise. And the man will rise. And people will look at it and behold the glory of God. From today, may your life begin to command results. In the name of Jesus Christ, from today, may your life begin to command supernatural results. And one of the things that we are going to be receiving today, in addition to faith, is this grace that can help men produce results. There is a grace for performance. There is a grace that can help man produce results. Let me tell you this. There are some possibilities that are not affordable within the realm and the world of men. If you ever see a human performing this level, this attaining this height and this level of results, it is proof that God is with them. Rabbi, he says, John chapter 3 and verse 1, We know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man can do these signs and wonders except God be with him. Verse 2 no man there are things that men cannot do please hear me there are things that men cannot do there are things that men cannot do there are things only god can do and god has come to honor your praise many of you have come right from the ministrations even till today when i watch you celebrating and rejoicing I said no lord you have to honor your people the kind of result that when someone laughs at you and says this your church you are always jumping and shouting and in two weeks you bring a result a dimension of grace you you don't have to be the one talking results have voices they can speak listen if you are always the one explaining and defending yourself is proof you don't have results moses spoke for a few minutes and he said rod continue speaking he threw the rod on the ground to keep doing the speaking have you given your results voices to speak? Can your result tell men Jesus is Lord? Can your result tell men the glory of the Lord is real? Hallelujah. I made up my mind that everything within me that can glorify God will glorify God. I will not reject any good thing that comes from God that can make for kingdom come. If it's prosperity, Maranatha. If it's favor, Maranatha. Let it come. If it's speed, let it come. If it's influence, let it come. I'm saying this so that if you buy, if people have made it to reject anything, any dimension of the glory of God, 
you must embrace it today and say lord in addition to favor i need influence i need i need to be able to stand at the gates and speak and defend his majesty is god wasting your time this morning some of you have come here sick and now if you leave back and you say oh that situation that liver problem i came to church ah, what is there about church and you go to the hospital and the same doctor who tested you says come where did you say you went to you said do you know what a life i pass it every day say that's the problem your life would have been 10 times better if you ever entered it one day the next time you come you will see people waiting at your car and say please is there space can i tell you this nobody leaves what works nobody leaves what works in the where the carcasses are carcasses don't call eagles a mango tree does not have um protocol a mango tree does not go to a newspaper and say come to me it just produces big juicy the same tree you pass every day suddenly it begins to produce mighty mighty you know there's this mango i don't know what they call it this one that is like a human head one big mango are we together you see it hanging on that tree and before you know it you begin to come the same tree you ignored the same tree you ignored even jesus did not ignore a tree with green leaves jesus he came and said it looks like you have results when he did not find fruit he didn't advise the tree he cursed it cursed it every tree that does not bear fruit he said my father will prune god is obsessed with fruit bearing because it is how his glory is being revealed please hear me no matter what your endeavor is i like you to be angry with ordinary results i want to see the glory of god revealed in and through my life i want to see the good hand of god revealed in and through my life i want to see the power of god revealed through my life when i saw this my dear people dancing the kind of energy that they had that those those dance groups i said no these guys must be under the influence of a dimension of the holy ghost <laughs> if i dance like this they will take me to the hospital today the energy it tells you it is not ordinary from today when people see your life someone will call you and say come is it that you are the only person in this city are you the only person what is all this one in my presence someone came and greeted two of us and gave you a gift and left me and you tell the person we are not carrying the same thing we are wearing the same clothes even if it's unco but you are not carrying the same thing on your head be angry with your current level and say father there has to be something upon my life this was the prayer i prayed many years i said lord i don't want to do ordinary ministry and this is not just for the marketing of the flesh no i desire my life to be a testament of what you can do with a man and through a man creator of the universe what can't you do what can't you do Jesus the name above every other name what can you change what can you change Jesus this is the part I want you to sing with all your heart you are able great and mighty you are able, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Let me share with you something on a lighter note. Years ago, when we would be traveling for administration, um, sometimes they would wait at the airport to receive me. And people have all kinds of ways that they receive me. Sometimes they bring children with flowers. Sometimes maybe trumpeters and all kinds of things. And sometimes I just wear my polo and a jean trouser with my earphones and my phone. And when I come down from the plane, you see the people looking around. Where is he? They look at my protocol. They look around. And then maybe one person who knows me, when they start greeting me, you can see the shock 
and the disappointment. We've been waiting two hours for this thing. And I look at them with compassion. I say, don't worry. Let's go to the stage. It's not pride. Forgive me. Forgive me. I repent if there's any. It's not pride. But listen, what I'm saying is, there is this treasure in earthen vessels. This is how people, sometimes when people believe you, you leave them, oh, it's a build up of your testimony. Don't stop it. Allow them to be done belittling you. And then they see what the favor of God can do in your life. And they stand and wonder and say, ah, My own tribesman ignored me. This man we know that does not fear God nor regard man. Yet he came and blessed you. Something must be there in your life. I want to hear you and you say, Come and hear what I hear. When you hear what I hear, you will become what I'm becoming. If you are not willing to bear fruit, let me tell you this, you will be despised in this life. I hate to say this, but the world we live in is a world that only respects results. Genuine results. It's an uncomfortable truth, but come to terms with it. If you do not have genuine, consistent results, the Bible says Gentiles will come to your light. Their kings will not come to your light. They will, be, they will hear about you, but they will be watching. But when your result becomes excelling and also passing, one day, even the queen of Sheba will come to you, O Solomon, and say, we have heard of the excellency of the hand of God upon your life. When you tell them you came from Nazareth, they will no longer laugh and say, can anything good come out of Nazareth? I don't care whether your village is in the map or not. God can pick you from where you are and exalt you and give you a voice. That whenever people are talking of favor, if you are teaching someone on favor, and after 15 minutes he does not understand, you just say, do you know Reverend Godwin Abba? He says, yes, say now, you understand what I'm saying? And the person says, I get it. They can, you personify a dimension of God's grace. God can give men speed. Well, I don't know Zechariah, I don't know all these guys, I don't know Elijah. Say, who can I find? And they just mentioned someone. He said, do you know how what are life members? You've seen what have, has happened to them in the last three months. So, oh, you heard the story too. We've heard that there's, there's, there's some speed that is happening in this place. Isn't it amazing that as plenty as we are in this country, if someone steals in 24 hours, everybody knows that there was once a thief. Newspaper, internet. It's not just for marketing nonsense alone. It's also for letting the world know that Jesus is alive. Are we together? Let's bring fame to the name of Jesus through the excellency of our results. That someone can kneel down at home and say, look at what this man's life is commanding for loving God is what I rejected God to look for. I rejected prayer. I rejected worship. I rejected integrity because i was looking for money and fame now i've not found it here is a man with integrity of heart loving god in righteousness and sincerely you have given them a proposal through your life it's amazing the things people leave god for pastor they will leave god in a heartbeat looking for promotion there are people right now who will sit at the office of people who they believe can help them from morning till night even at a time like this when the word of God is coming. They say, no, 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 no. I will listen to it one day. I need a contract. And God is saying, stay. One thing is needful. Matter, matter. You are worried and offended about many things. One prophetic word from this altar can set your life on fire. And yet people will ignore it. So God needs to use you as a specimen to show people that Jesus Christ is not a nuisance to advancement. That Jesus is not a nuisance to civilization. That as a politician, you can serve God and rise through God. Hallelujah. Don't believe all that thing to say everybody who rises has, has had to have cut corners. No, there are, some, there are people who have not bowed to Baal. And yet with the dignity of kingdom integrity have risen. Your results will bring people to their knees. That someone 
will go down on his knees not because he's watching a sermon he hears of the testimonies of the wonder working power of god in your life and says no i've been in this same abuja i carried my brother i brought here and my brother came to ward a life and received fire in two years look what has become of his life the reason why we desire results is number one as consolations to our christian experience but then number two the revelation of the glory of god are you ready to pray father i am tired of this level i desire a higher dimension of glory a higher dimension of results in my life lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray are you praying this morning what a life Touch my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Touch my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. You are the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, take your place, take your place, take your place, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, your name is called Emmanuel, your name is called the Lion of the tribe of Judah lives in me. Is walking inside the lion of the tribe of Judah lives in me. He's walking inside. Is the lion of the tribe of Judah lives in me. He's walking inside the lion of the tribe of Judah lives in me. He's walking inside of me. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I am living this level, a greater level of glory, a greater level of fire, a greater level of results, in the name of Jesus Christ, the King of glory is about to pass through my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we still together? You are going to mention every aspect of your life where it looks like there are gates stopping you from seeing the glory of God. For some of you, it's your finances. This thing has refused to answer. Don't waste this conference. For some of you, it's the area of your health. Month after month, there is always an evil report. You have this, you have that. Just when you are blessed, they now tell you you have this, you need to go to the hospital until the money finishes, then you become fine. That devil is a liar. For some of you, it's the education of your children. You spend so much money on them, they return back with evil reports. For some of you is that there is no favor no increase i'd like you to pray the glory of god must be revealed in this area that area of my life mention it and lift your voice and begin to pray go ahead 
You are in ministry, declare over your ministry. You are in business, declare over your business. It is time for the glory of the Lord to be revealed in my life. It is time for the glory of God to be revealed through my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We have just about 10 minutes. I want to pray for you. This is my last and final session. And I truly believe that your life would never be the same. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to be sensitive within these next 10 minutes. I'm standing, joining faith with the angel over this house. It's time for things to change in your life. Yeah. For some of you, what is coming upon you is the grace that will give you strange speed. Yeah. I'm telling you, you will, you will begin to move at a frequency that will surprise you. For some of you, it's access to the gift of men. Men will arise from everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. It is seen to minister above the level of grace you are given. The Bible says every man, that means don't make statements you do not have the grace to defend. This man you see standing before you with all humility. I know what it means to be a partaker of the mercy of God. What you see is an election of grace. We are sent to the body. I love and I honor your pastor so much and the humility of his heart to allow the entrances of these graces to your life, to your destiny. We are made by the graces that are upon us. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup. He does not anoint your cup. I know what is on your cup by looking at what is on your head. If your cup is empty, don't blame the cup. The cup is innocent. Is that your head is also empty. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So I'd like for your heart to be open just about 10 minutes and we'll pray. I'm hearing a name Jennifer. Who is Jennifer? Jennifer. Is there someone with such a name? You are at the back. I'm seeing you're a fair lady at the back. This is what God is showing me. Is there someone like that? Just help me if please. Huh? Okay, you know the person. Who is that? Where are you from, my dear? Three of you. The person the Lord is talking to is from you, who has something to do with worry? Delta State. Who is from Delta? Where are you from? Delta State. Delta. I want to pray for you. Because I'm going to pray for you. Don't worry. Father, in the name of Jesus, listen. The Lord wants to pray over your family. Look at me. You're a member of this church? I want to pray for you in the presence of your pastor and to speak over your life that the Lord will shift you. This is what God is bringing to your family. There's somebody who will shout under the anointing now. Please bring that person here. We just have 10 minutes. I just saw light. There is a power of God coming over someone and say, family for the sake of their family please bring the person it's a loud shout to the hearing of everybody the supernatural power of god i just i'm seeing like smoke just moving from the front to the back in the name of jesus christ my dear i declare over your life by the power of the holy spirit may the lord bring visitations to your family in the name of jesus christ who is naomi 
I'm hearing a name Naomi. It's like Naomi. Someone with that name, Naomi. This is my brother. I want to pray. Is there someone with that name? Naomi. You are wearing a black dress. Black, complete. Who is that? Are you a member of this church? So that, please listen. I know, hold on. I know that prophecies have been corrupted. People do all sorts of things. But please don't mistake it. Not everybody is on serious with God. There are people who have paid their price and have been shown mercy by God. It's important I say this. So that you do not think every manifestation of prophecy is necessarily an operation of demons. No. My brother, I pray for you. I don't know him, but in Jesus' name, I pray for you. The way the Lord will begin to lift you. I'm seeing you climb a ladder in the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, please don't be offended. With all due respect, the Lord is asking me to speak to you, sir. This, this uh, father on suit, you can just stand here, sir. You may not need to come just to honor him. I don't know you, sir, but I'm seeing you climb a ladder in the spirit. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, it will not be long from now. I don't know what it is that you do. I saw you try to climb a ladder and it broke and brought you down. And the Lord says it will not happen like it happened before. This is a word that the Lord is giving you. In the name of Jesus, may that word be so. Madam, this woman wearing a gold, please lift your hands. Just lift both of your hands. I'm seeing like oil coming on your head. And I'm asking why. Help her, please. I'm seeing oil coming on your head. And the Lord is saying it's an oil of favor, even over your family. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be so. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Madam, can I pray for you? In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God. Are you here alone? There, the Lord is showing me a woman. Your child is very sick. This is what I don't know who this is. I'm seeing, I don't know what the situation is, but you have a very sick child. And the, and the Lord wants me to pray for that person. To avert death. To avert death this is a place where dead things and people come to life this is not a place where death happens in the name of Jesus Christ I stretch my hands and I pray for you ah I'm seeing fire just coming on you in the name of Jesus I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit let everything that represent oppression come to an end now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ who is Uche Uche, I'm hearing a name Uche. 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 This is a lady. I know I don't I know they use Uche for both male and female, but this is who is Alaska Branda Kaporuski Atabada. Where do you come from, my dear? Where are you from? Where are you from? Who is from Enugu? What give her the mic? Where are you from? No, man. Enugu State. Yes. I want to pray for you. I will pray for everyone, but there is witchcraft that the Lord wants to break right now. Yes. Are we together? The Bible says, blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us. My dear, in the name of Jesus, I declare over your life that every plague why am I praying for this lady and yet the power of God is falling on other people? This is what I'm seeing in a vision. Please bring them out. I'm praying for this lady oh, that witchcraft be broken. But I'm seeing in a vision the power of God is falling on people in the congregation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just bring those under the anointing. We have 10 minutes for this. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that has to do with witchcraft and the activities of darkness. Right now I declare let it be broken. Let it be broken by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let it be broken now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let it be broken from left to right, front to the back, in the name of Jesus. Here at Water Life Center, anyone who is under any influence that is not of the Christ, I come against it in Jesus' name. I come against it in Jesus' name. I come against it in Jesus' name. I stretch my hands to you look at me my dear in the name of Jesus I bring you deliverance 
by the power of the Holy Spirit. And for all of you who are in front, I declare, in Jesus' name, let there be deliverance for you. Now, please, very quickly, if you are trusting God for healing, just lay your hands there. We've not had the time to pray for the sick. Lay your hands. I command every spirit. I'm just seeing a snake rolling in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare, be gone now by the power of the Holy Spirit. There are people who are exchangers of the glory of others. The Lord is putting in me to pray that anything that is yours but was taken away from you and exchanged, the power of God is coming on you now. It must return. I declare right now. Let there be restoration, restoration right now restoration of everything missing help that help that lady please restoration by the power of the holy ghost the same you've touched his grace your life is changed you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life is changed restoration everything taken from you i'm here to pray for the sick the lord is telling me to pray for restoration hear me anyone sitting on your seat now i overturn i overturn I overturn, I overturn, I overturn, I over Bring them out. I overturn, I overturn in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Anyone who said over his dead body for you to rise, may that prayer be answered now. May that prayer be answered now. Everything that has refused to grow in your hands, in the name of Jesus, Everything that is alive grows. Therefore, whatever has refused to grow, I stand in faith with your pastor and I declare increase to your hands. Spiritually, increase to your hands. Financially, increase to your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a young man I'm seeing somebody, you are into real estate, you are a young man. Who is that person? I don't mean just, you just have like the idea. You are actively into it. The Lord wants me to pray for that person. You are wearing glasses. I'm seeing in a vision, like brown dr dress. Is there someone like that? Are you a member of this church? Yes, sir. Huh? So that we don't, what do you do, sir? I want to pray for you. You believe in the power of God? It's not only the heavens and the earth God makes, so He can make men. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sas, I pray for you. No, you don't have to kneel. I pray for all of you, standing in faith with the grace that is upon God's servant, I declare upon you. You will excel in a way that when you come and stand upon this altar to testify, it will be as if it's a lie, but it will be true. In the name of Jesus Christ. And everything limiting your growth, I come against it right now in Jesus' name. Everything limiting your growth, I come against it in Jesus' name. Whatever has been missing in your life, relationships, 
prophetic connections in the name that is above all names i'm declaring to you right now wherever it is the same grace that came upon the ark of noah and made all the animals to find their way by themselves to that ark i command everything that has left you that should not have left you may it find its way back to your life find its way back to your destiny find its way back to your life find its way back to your destiny hallelujah please do not come out i will just give it as a prophetic word i'm seeing someone here you are quite an influential personality you have a court case that has been dragging for years you don't have to come out maybe because of security reasons but in the name of jesus the lord is asking me to speak to you that this month of july the lord is bringing you victory i don't know who that person is but i'm speaking as one sense that in the name of jesus this is like one two three about four years at least the lord is saying he's overturning and he's bringing you victory in the name of jesus the christ of god in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ are you ready to pray favor provoking prayers in one minute open your mouth lord your glory revealed as favor through my life let it come lift your voice and pray we're wrapping up lift your voice and pray the favor of god the number one reason why men succeed and advance in this life go ahead and pray Your favor upon my life. Hallelujah. 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 Sir, I'm about to pray for the sick, but if you will permit me, the Lord just gave me a word that there are many people here who are trusting God for establishment in terms of territory, properties, maybe to establish themselves. And the Lord just spoke to me to pray over. Is, is, am I, can I pray that prayer? Psalms 44, verse 3. I want you to receive this grace and watch the wonder it will do in your life. Read with me if you are a Christian. One, two, read. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand and the light of your... Because thou hast a favor. Can I tell you this? I don't claim to know everything about business. But when it has to do with establishment, it is God that helps men. He's called Ebenezer, the helper of men. There are many people here, you are trusting God for the grace for structural establishment. When Jacob told Laban, leave me, I need to have my own home to and establish myself. Laban refused to allow him and said, I'll be giving you peanuts to keep you because laban used divination and found out that the blessing upon jacob was why his house was prospering there are people who have refused to let you go to establish yourself you are getting old your family is suffering you cannot even own a property this is not carnality you need to be established to give you room to serve the purposes of god worry can drain your spiritual life can i pray for that grace there is a grace that can help people to be established father you have put this word in my spirit and in the name of jesus i pray for everyone in this great church and following online who genuinely desire structural establishment for some of you between now and december 25th in the name of Jesus, I send a prophetic word that Christmas this year will be in your own house. How shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man, he said the power of the highest shall overshadow you. I declare it again. The grace that 
can go ahead of you and bring you into prepared blessings may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now please lay your hands let's pray for the sick now as we wrap up how god anointed jesus of nazareth acts chapter 10 and verse 38 with the holy ghost and with power the bible says he went about doing good and healing not they who were sick they who were oppressed sickness is an oppression there is a biological angle to it but there is largely a spiritual angle to it the bible says for god was with him hallelujah and in matthew chapter 10 when you read from verse 1 and then verse 10 jesus mandated the apostles he said as ye go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand he says heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead freely you have received freely give are we together please place your hand if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest and believe forget about the doctor's report now you just believe Oh, 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 your healing has come. Oh, 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 oh. I don't know why God does this. Someone will shout loud under the anointing. The moment that happens, the healing power of Jesus will begin to move. I will just pray in one minute. Are you ready now? In the name of Jesus Christ, shout a loud amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are not just shouting. Jericho is falling. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of, help them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help them in the name of Jesus Christ. Get Jericho. Hear the shout. The healer is the shout of the king. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command every devil that is back of any sickness. Help that woman please. And any infirmity. I curse you be gone now leave their bodies now you don't have to bring them out don't bring them out just hide them so they don't injure themselves right now i decree and declare from the crown of your head down to the soles of your feet be healed in jesus name be healed in jesus name my god there's such power the power of god is moving here be healed in jesus name my grain headache the lord is healing my grain headache right now in the name of jesus i'm seeing someone with a severe problem around your chest the power of god is touching you right now be healed in the name of jesus someone your left your left leg i'm seeing i don't know what pain but right now in the name of jesus be healed all kinds of growths in your body breast lumps fibroids every devil that god did not plant we command an exodus of it out of your body you have a problem with your eyesight right now in the name of jesus be healed be healed there's someone you don't have to come out i'm just praying I, I, what i'm seeing is like you have a problem i don't know if it's indigestion or constipation regardless of what you eat is something that con you you are even afraid of eating because no matter how little it will trouble your stomach for a long time right now as i'm praying for you the power of god is coming upon you be healed in the name of jesus i'm seeing someone you can't sleep ordinarily until you take pills some pills that was given to you from the hospital i declare in the name of jesus christ 
that sleeplessness will cause you by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hotness of the body. Be gone now in the name of Jesus. You walk for very little and then you are extremely tired. You are not someone who has advanced in age. But you can stand even just for a little while and you are completely tired. In the name of Jesus, I don't know what the medical name is, but I command the spirit that is back of it to leave you now. If there is anyone here called barren, hear the word of the Lord. By this time next year, return with miracle children. By this time next year, return with miracle children. Now any part of your body, help, help that woman please. Any part of your body that is sick and afflicted, whether mentioned or not, in the name of Jesus here at Word Life on this Sunday morning, be healed now. Be healed now. And I pray for everyone trusting God for a miracle job here. I release my faith. There is a God who can help men. In the name of Jesus, like it happened in the house of Obed Edom, three months from now, help them please. Three months from now, wherever your job is, in Abuja, in Lagos, in this nation, around the world, we call that job to locate you in Jesus' name. Every home and every family here that is unsettled, it doesn't matter what raging storm around the family, we speak right now at this conference, Shalom, peace be still, peace be still, peace be still. I join my faith with your father, the angel over this house. Every level of result you seek, I release my faith with you. I push you into it by prophecy. I push you into it by prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ can I pray over your finances have you heard of this proverb that in one day Zion is built it says but as soon as Zion travails a nation can be built in one day it depends on who is building it if it's an architect that is building it, you will need time. But if it's God that is building it, all he says is, let there be and there is. I pray for you. In the name that is above all names, over your finances, whatever it is that you are involved with, we force it to work now. And for those of you that gates and doors have closed towards your finances, we scatter those gates now. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says your gates shall be continually open. Day or night they will not be shut. So that you will receive the forces of the Gentiles. It says where you have been deserted so that no man passes through you. You become an eternal excellency. A joy of many generations. Can I pray for everyone connected to this grace? Members of this church, sons and daughters of the man of God following from anywhere, I declare, as God lifts your father and your prophet, may you partake of that lifting. As God honors his servant, may God honor you. As God beautifies his life, may he beautify your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for every faithful worker serving God in this church day and night serving in secret serving in the open I pray for you the reward that follows stewardship let it follow you thank you for watching our entire video today if you feel you can bless someone please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media